心配だよねいざという時にちゃんと止まれるタイヤウェット A ウェット A ウェットグリップ性能 A のタイヤなら雨でもしっかり止まれて高い安全性を発揮滑りやすい濡れた路面でもより安心でやる横浜伝統と革新オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングクラッチ ORC モティー The brightness. Call it brilliant. Valenti. Ne ne, ame no hi no unten te, chopili, shinpo de me. Iza to yu toki ni chanto tomare t a i a Ueto e. Ueto e. Ueto grip se no e no taia nara. Ame de mo shikari tomare te. 高い安全性を発揮滑りやすい濡れた路面でもより安心でやる横浜伝統と革新オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングクラッチ ORC モティー The brightness. Call it brilliant. Valenti.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Formula Drift Japan FDJ2 season opener round one here at Ebisu Circuit West Course. Please stand up for the Japanese national anthem, and then we'll fall by, we'll be rolling into the、uh, vehicle or the driver's introduction. All right, now we would like to go to introducing the top 16 here at the first round of Formula Drift Japan FDJ2. Let me go ahead and start from the far left, facing the drivers from the judging stand. That is car number 771. He qualified number one here at the first round of FDJ2, Cusco Racing ZN6 Toyota 86, Yoshitatsu Kaneda. Battling against him right here in the number 27 car by Agent K's racing in the S15, ranking number 16, Yoji Ida. Driving this orange four door big body vehicle, car number 728, ranking eighth in yesterday's qualify, Kanane with TM Labo, JZX 100 Mark II, Tomoki Wada. Battling against him is going to be in the Auto Garage SR33 Skyline, number 220, Shinichi Ishizuka. Qualifying fourth, rocking the JZX90 Mark II with Washikura Onsen with Jim Z Speed Master. This is car number 34, Sho Saito. Going against Saito is going to be with the K's Racing S14, number 66, Rayume Akara. In another Toyota A6, beautiful with the Modi's color, Team Kazama with Modi's. Qualifying fifth, car number 12, Nagayasu Miyagi. Dr. Miyagi. Ranking 12 with Team Ito Auto JZX 100 Cresta, number 590, Hiroaki Kogurai. Qualifying second from yesterday's qualified Team Good Ride with Kindai S15 Sylvia, the Yamanaka DNA right here, car number 11, Mao Yamanaka. Battling against him, ranking number 15 with the APG Japan Karzu Racing S15, Kazumasa Suzuki. Another team Kazama car in a JZX 100 Chaser, qualifying seventh at yesterday's qualify. This is car number 75, Koji Nagase. Ranking 10th with the artist TM Labo. Motis, Zeknova, JZZ30, Sword, number 570, Yuchi Miyasaka. Is this guy real fast? Yes, he's real fast racing in the S15 Sylvia. Qualified third at yesterday's qualify. Car number 310, Atsushi Hirayama.
Beautiful big body, JZX100, Mark Toon with the Team Kazuma with Madi's number 10, Rio Okabe. And the last battle of the top 16 is going to be these guys right here. This guy is in another beautiful green JZX100 chaser from Village Up, car number six, K Murakami. And last but not least, coming in the D Dash Racing S15, ranking number 11th, number 52, Konosuke Fujimoto. All right, now I'm really excited to see these guys. They're going to go head to head. There's going to be eight battles in this top 16, and we're, we're going to find out who's going to be on top for the first uh, FDJ battle that we have this year. And this is the first time we're doing this. This is the first year. It's just like Pro Spec in the U.S., so I'm just blown away. I'm excited. Exactly, and a lot of these cars are beautiful. You got a different blend between JZX's, S15's. You got A6's out here, and a lot that we don't see in FDJ or in uh, FDJ right now in the Pro Comp. So. Definitely cool to see these guys out here. They've definitely been de tearing it up throughout qualifying and through practice session this morning, but I'm definitely looking forward to this head-to-head -head battle they're about to do. All right, so I guess that's enough talking from us because I'm pretty sure everybody's eager to jump in their car and start their engines. Let's go ahead and see some battles. Let's get this party started. So while they're heading back to the pits and everything, um, let's go ahead and introduce our judges for the day. So obviously you all probably know, Robbie Nishida, the co-commentator, the commentator right now, he'll be uh, one of the judges, but alongside we got Yoichi Imamura, which is uh, on the other end, he, you obviously recognize him from Formula Drift Japan Pro Series. Um, but in the middle, we have a guest judge that many of you all have seen before, maybe not seen last week at uh, round two, but we have Andrew Gray right here with us as the guest judge for Formula FDJ2. Yeah, so Andrew Gray is joining the judges panel. He's not he's not retiring from driving. He's just <laughs> doing this for the FDJ2. He's helping us out so we can get this thing going and uh, get the show started. But also, just like you said, Yoichi Momura is over there. And also uh, on the PA and uh, within this track right here, we have Tom Saeba. He will be commenting commentating in Japanese as well. Yes. So yes. I know, uh, hopefully you guys aren't um, tired of seeing us. <laughs> I know. But this is a group of new um, up and coming young drivers that are wanting to get into the FD Japan side of, of uh, all the competition. They're trying and you to never know, they might be the next, you know, Taguchi, Masayama, these guys that are going to the US uh, you just don't know. The exactly. possibility is just, you know, Exactly. Unlimited. These guys definitely are hungry for a spot. They're definitely trying to prove their point, show their driving skills, and, you know, make a name for themselves, especially for this FDJ2 uh, season opener and season for itself. So it's going to be awesome. They're definitely going to be doing a little bit of different tracks from what we do in FDJ side of the house. So it's going to be cool to see a different blend of other tracks that they offer here in Japan. But... Yeah, the in challenges two weeks, that are involved. Yeah, um, not even, I don't want to, you know, speak too soon, but after this round, even though this is our uh, ra season opener, in two weeks we're going to be going to Bihoku's, which, which is like, what, way Eight down minutes. south. So, All right, so this is pretty much the same as Formula Drift Japan, but let me go ahead and explain to you a little about what we are looking for with these drivers. The lead car would have to do the best as they can uh, for their lead run. The chase car has to mimic the lead driver, with their angle, line, and also try to stay as close as possible. Uh, the proximity side of it is very important too. They want to stay as close as possible. We don't want to see any sloppy driving, but here you are, you see the outside zone one, followed by an in-clip uh, in clip one. Then you have an outside zone two and three. That's the switchback right there. And there's uh, that's pretty critical because a lot of people that over rotates after outside zone three, 
and going into in clip with a lot of angle. You have to finish drifting all the way through the finish line, line without straightening or spinning out. Then uh, we're going to watch the lead car versus the lead. Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to see the lead to lead chase to chase where the cars are going to switch sides after one run. So they're going to have two consecutive one runs and we're going to see how they're going to do on their lead runs per car and how they're going to chase that car. So obviously a good lead run is going to create a good chase. And it's going to uh, be a really nice tandem to see both cars doing well. So Just like you said, though, they're going to hear a lot of lead to lead, chase to chase, because that's what you guys are going to be looking for as judges, comparing the two to make sure that you guys are picking the right guy to move on to the grade eight, final four, and finishing us off. And right here, um, this is the first time for him to join us for the FDJ uh, judge panel. But Andrew Gray has four championships under his belt, a uh, very experienced driver, drives like a gazillion cars uh owns power vehicles here at uh Ebisu circuit so he has so much experience so uh having him um right next to us as one of the judges is uh it's going to be cool he has a good eye i think he definitely does especially this being his home track and everything he knows this track from like the back of his hand so yeah and you know too bad uh <laughs> and he couldn't make it last last of it i'm not laughing about it it's just that uh we talked about it so much but yeah it's it's really sad for him to not be able to compete last year I'm sorry, not last year, last week here, because, I mean, he's one of the, you know, championship contenders. And, he is. Um, yeah, so he's going to try to come back. He promised to put himself in a bubble two weeks prior to, so we're definitely going to expect him next round. Yeah, because we, we're about <laughs> two months away, so hopefully nothing happens within that two months to anybody actually out there. Most definitely. And there you go. You can see it. We are um, um, about to start this, but let us go ahead and take a short break, and we'll be right back with more exciting drifting. ウェット。ウェット。横浜。Guys, it's Freddy Gospel, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. Eo RSR Ichiban. と革新。オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。オグラレーシングプラッチ。ORC。モティ。The brightness, the call it brilliant. Valenti. Ne ne, ame no hi no unten te, chopili shinpai de me. Iza to yu toki ni chanto tomare de taya. Ueto e. Ueto e. Ueto grip se no e no taya nara. Ame de mo shikari tomare te. 高い安全性を発揮滑りやすい濡れた路面でもより安心だ
横浜伝統と革新オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングクラッチ ORC モーティー The brightness. Call it brilliant. Valenti. And we're back here at the Yokohama Presents Formula Drift Japan FDJ2 2021 season opener round one here at Ebisu West Course in the Fukushima Prefecture. And I am your host, Kenny Harris. And beside me is that, Translator. that guy, Robbie Nishida. <laughs> but yeah, welcome back. Um, it's been a week. Exactly. Uh, we've been back here uh, back to back. Back to back, you know. It's, it's so really it's, hot today, too. And it's a little different, too. So we didn't have a qualifying yesterday that was live. We just went straight into qualifying, knocked that out, and then here we are today to fill a top 16. We didn't have a top 32 because there's there wasn't 32 competitors, so um, they chopped it to the top 16. Well, it's always like that. So the well, yeah, prospect yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, uh, starts at top 16 uh, in the U.S., too. So... Um, so we did the qualify yesterday, and then there was some amazing driving. Um, some of these cars are pretty much ready to just go right into FDJ, uh, which is the next step up. And I believe that the top 10 drivers for the FDJ2 is going to be getting their FD Japan license. So from, now, uh, from next year, they will be able to compete with the big dogs in FDJ. But I would have to say that the skill level and the car builds are pretty much getting really close in between these two uh, series. So, I mean, I wouldn't even know who's going to win and who's going to go home with the, the top spot today. Oh, you're right, you're right. You have any, so what are some like, defined separations between making FDJ different from, you know, FDJ itself? All right, so just like you said, it's Yokohama Presents. FDJ2 is uh, pretty much, it's a spec um, series. So we have okay. one tire manufacturer. Everybody is on the Advan 8008s, and... Um, it's a fair game. Like everybody has the same amount of grip. Everything else uh, comes from mechanical grip, engine power, driver's drivability, techniques. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting. Where I won't, I don't think we're going to be seeing a lot of cars that are trying to run away because of you know different grip levels and tires, um, and tire sizes. Because uh, pretty much there's only a couple different sizes out here. I think it's like only 255, 265, and a 285. Yeah. Uh, I think. And a lot of these drivers, they're driving a lot of dynamic, and they're ready to prove their point. After talking to a few of the, a few of the drivers already, they definitely are gunning to be in FDJ next year. So definitely they're trying to get into that top spot to get there. And we saw some good qualifying runs, or not qualifying, but practice 
um, runs along with qualifying that we saw yesterday. So it's going to be an interesting day. And, you know, the weather, for one, this weekend has been amazing. Not like last weekend where Friday we kind of dealt with a little bit of rain and then uh, rolled into some beautiful weather. But here we've had beautiful weather the whole weekend. So not this following weekend, but the weekend after that, we will be moving down south to uh, Bihoku Circuit. Uh, which is around Okayama area. So we're looking um, at like a 12 plus hour trip from here. If we were to leave here, it'd probably be about 12 hours plus. Yeah, so from the Tokyo area, I think it's like eight and a half hours, but we're gonna have a round there and there will be a, sh uh, a short break in between. Um, in uh, July, there's not um, many events in Japan for the FDJ side, but uh, Formula Drift Erie is going to happen on the 10th, 9th and the 10th of uh, July. And we'll be back in FDJ, uh, Formula Drift Japan and FDJ2, which will be happening on the same weekend um, of August. The first weekend of August is going to be actually the second weekend of August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, six, seven, and eight. So we'll be back then after the Bihoku round and so on and so on. But uh, always have that in mind because we have FD English Town next weekend. Yes. So you'll be able to enjoy more drifting every weekend. I mean, t think about it. We had FDJ Ebisu, then we got FDJ2, then we got FD New Jersey. Then if you want to see more FDJ action, we'll be back in Bihoku the following weekend after FD uh, English Town. So that's a lot of uh, drifting. Back to back to, to back watch, to back, yeah. yeah, for sure. And I know you're at different time zones, so it might be a hello, good morning, good night, good evening. Exactly, and you can always but you can always catch us. Uh, on, you yeah, know. you can just check it uh, later on YouTube if you don't have the time to watch it live. But it's a lot exciting when you see it live because you don't know what's going to happen. You can't anticipate anything, and it's all you know. It's live, and that's where we make our mistakes, where they can you know hear it or mute us out. You know, yeah. Or. Well, I think even if we make mistakes. Whatever's on the internet's always going to be there, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can't forget that. Okay, so let me go ahead and explain how to uh, judge for drifting, uh, especially this is FD. There's so many different um, series all over the world, but um, the style we do ha have in uh, FD is we make sure that the lead car does what they're supposed to do. Run the outside line, line at the outside zones, try to make a quick transition at initiation, and also when they're going from one drift to another, as tight as possible at the end clip. And while you're driving through all the zones and clips, you have to be at most angle as possible. And you have to be back on uh, gas as soon as possible as well. So whoever does that the best uh, takes the first spot and qualify. Now, when it becomes tandem, we want the lead car to do that. We, we want the lead car to do exactly that, where they run the outside line, they're not running away, they're not cheating the line, or running a shallower angle to run away because this isn't drag racing, this is drifting. We want the car to be as sideways as possible. The chase car will have to chase down the car that's doing a run like that. So obviously, when they're on the outside line, they have to run the outside line. And we want the chase car to run the same line, same exact line, same exact angle at close proximity. So that's really, really hard to do because you know you see some cars chasing and you're, you know, you think like, oh yeah, he's all over him. But basically, they're running a smaller line because if you if you look at the car from the front and you can see both the front ends, that means the chase car is on a slightly smaller line. So obviously, if you're running a smaller line, it's faster to get to your destination, right? So uh, if you're running on the same line, same angle, man, it's really, really hard to do. And we think that that's like the highest, uh, It's you need you need skills to do that, so. Yeah, and it gets intimidating out here, especially with this straight that they have here at Bisu going straight into this dirt wall. So they're coming with some heat through the three, two, one, initiating into outer zone one. And that outer zone one, most would like it further in, but it's not. The challenge is, is bringing it out, making them stretch their car all the way out to get from the outer zone one to the inside clip uh, one. But definitely seen some challenges from last week to looking into FDJ two now. They're 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 starting to understand to get from one to outer zone one to inside clip one, and definitely getting that you know that danger zone we were talking about from inside clip one to outer zone two. They're starting to understand it, starting to get it down, and we did see a lot of good tandem battles during practice. And just we were saying this uh, dirt wall right here uh, that is next to us at the judging stand. I mean, we've seen a few cars get eaten up by that wall. And this is pretty famous here where, you know, there's been flips. And, you know, um, even last weekend for practice, there was a car that went up the wall and almost flipped, you know. So yeah. 
That was pretty dangerous. As we are speaking, there are our first battle right here. That is Kaneda Yoshitatsu versus Ida Yoji. Yoji Ida. Yoshitatsu Kaneda versus Yoji Ida. So this is the number one qualifier versus the number 16 qualifier. Yeah, and uh, Kaneda definitely did an amazing job in his Cusco 8-6. I mean, he scored a 93 in qualifying, but I think it might be part of his, uh, his spotting crew that he had. You know, he had a familiar name. He had Yusuke Kusaba over there. Yeah, Kusaba <laughs> racing um, with the Cusco Racing um, Supra. Yeah, the, the GR Supra. Supra yeah. yeah, the GR Supra in FDJ. Uh, he's been in that car and developing that car for a year now. And uh, looks like he's starting to pick up because, you know, I think he did amazing last oh, weekend yeah. too. So he has uh, somebody that sounds uh, familiar in his ears while he's driving. But at the same time, Kaneda is his spotter. Exactly. The tables turn for both sides. So yeah. they definitely both know the track. I mean, especially since he was here last week checking out the track. So he kind of knew what he had to do, and he definitely produced whenever he had to for uh, qualifying. So we see right here, uh, Kaneda is pulling up to the start line. And then Ida is uh, warming his tires up now. Yeah, so, and, uh, so Ida also is an experienced driver. He... This claims, is like his home yeah, track. Yeah, this is his home track because yeah, yeah. he lives in the area. Yeah, he's like he right in the Fukushima area. Yeah. yeah, he comes to Ebisu all the time um, and he drives this place. And uh, usually Nishi course, especially after the disaster, but before the disaster too, this wasn't open to everybody all the time unless it was a Matsuri weekend or if it was a, a track day that somebody rented out because they usually do grip racing or motorcycle races here. But I heard good, good rumors where... Uh, Kumakubo, which is the boss here at Ebisu Circuit, he was giving me some hints about building something cool on the backside of here, which might become a a, a, a new the, spot yeah. to go drifting. Something really, really different. So I'm really looking forward to how they're moving on and after they're overcoming this uh, landslide that they had. And whether it's Nishi or Nishi Short, it's definitely cool because, I mean, everybody knows this place is a drift mecca. It's got seven different courses here, two drift pads, so it's or uh, skid pads, so it's like just adding so that much more availability to these uh, people that come out and visit and want to get that experience in. Yeah, then I believe awesome. Ida is one of those guys. He's a big fan of this track, and he comes to this track all the time to go driving. So let's see. We are about to kick this off. This is top 16 here at Formula Drift Japan FDJ2, round one. Hopefully we didn't make his uh, shoes too big to fill so you're free, uh, Ida saying that this is his home track and everything. He got this. He's got it's it. okay. Beautiful yep. car, though. Look at that, uh, what would you call that, lime green? Not lime green. It's like fluorescent yellow. Yeah. Or just yellow. Very clean, but yes, it's built by the Agent K's Racing. It's a shop here locally that he, uh, he pretty much takes it to and gets every, every bit of work done to it. So Kaneda in the lead and Ida in the chase right here. Coming in through one. Nice lead right there, Dazobo. Oh. It looks Man. like there was a tap um, by Ida and spun Kaneda out. Let me go ahead and see if we can check it out and uh, verify that on the replay. Man, Kane but they're coming in hot. Yeah, and Kaneda I mean, right there, he was just, he had a nice first line into outer zone one. So let's see. He's Hopefully Kaneda's car is okay, but it looks like there was a love tap by Ida right here. Ooh. Yeah, there we yeah. go. So, um, usually we don't want to see slowdowns by any of the cars, abrupt slowdowns. But uh, right after outside zone one, going into inside clip one, that's pretty much a detail area. So, uh, most likely the car is going to have to slow down. So, we're going to go ahead and see, uh, make sure Kaneda's car is okay and also Ida's car is okay. Uh, let me go ahead and discuss this uh, real quick. But yeah, Kaneda just got off the uh, course, you could hear, but definitely uh, a way to start us off in our top 16 battles here. Checking in on him, make sure everything's good. But as you saw in the replay with that, uh, Ead uh, just definitely, definitely came in a little hot and didn't quite decel into that inside clip one. too aggressive in that part. So 
So we'll see here. Rolling back up to the line. But let's see. Yeah, so we were just reporting everything to the tech side of uh, the track. If Kaneda wants to check his car, he has 10 minutes because he was actually, he's the one who got hit. Ida's the one who actually bumped into him. So if Ida wants to check his car out, he would have to use a competition timeout. Now the rule about the competition timeout, every driver has one competition timeout, which is five minutes. It's going to give them five minutes since or after they start touching their car, uh, whatever they have to do within the five minutes they can do repairs, but they could only use it once the whole weekend. So uh, it's like you have to strategize and make sure that you use it at the right time. I'm not sure if there, it didn't look like it was like a super hard hit. So I think uh, they are contemplating to see if they're gonna go ahead and use the timeout or not. I'm getting some word right now. I'm getting a lot of chatter about speakers. Was it because we yelled in the mic or was it more because of the the vehicles coming through? All right, so it looks like Kaneda is going to be pulling into the pits. Um, he's going to have to, he's going to go ahead and check out his car to make sure that it is okay. Hopefully everything's good with it. He's been doing a phenomenal job all weekend. There you are, you can see Kaneda over there rolling up to his pits, his crew getting him in so they can do a quick check, make sure everything's good. That's why he's getting checked out. I think our next battle, they're gonna get their tires warmed up, get ready to go. So you see the Cusco Racing uh, 86 is uh, getting his car checked out real quick. So while they are doing that, we'll go ahead and send in the next cars, uh, the next bracket, the next battle of the top 16, which is going to be car number 728, Tomoki Wada versus car number 220, Shinichi Ishizuka. So Wada right there, he's in the Kaname with uh, TM Labo. He actually has a pretty good spotter alongside with uh, Kaneda. He actually has the Manoa family, Shinji over there helping him out, um, team members with him and, and out here in his JZX100. So definitely giving him a good bird's eye view on where he needs to be on the track and familiar with this track. As we have uh, Ishizuka in this Auto Garage S. R33. He's actually the owner of Auto Garage S, and he was saying that I guess it, him and his buddies got together and they were like, you know what, let's build a car and let's compete. So they went ahead and built this R33 coupe here, and uh, hopefully you're going to show us out right now. See, just like that, easy like that, you know, just boom, hey, you know what, hey, Kenny, let's go build a race car. <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> I don't know if your I shop. Don't can, I don't that. know if your shop can handle it. My shop can't handle <laughs> it. I just have cars sitting there collecting dust, so. So now I was talking to uh, everybody was talking about the mic and how, how I was getting kind of crazy. Oh, there you go, right there. That the is Minoa the Minoa's, right there. the Drift family. The uh, spotter for them all weekend. For, uh, uh, the Minoa is actually uh, Masayo Minoa, the only female Formula Drift Japan driver. She is the spotter for Tomoki Wada, which is that vehicle well, that's just coming out of the warm-up box. He's got multiple uh, bird's eye view though. He's got him or her, he's got Shinji, which is on the other side. So he's getting all angles of pretty much where he needs to be. Yeah, are they judging him or something? Or? <laughs> no, he just has a really good crew on his side. So yeah. that's, but that's nothing new. He's also there supporting them whenever they come to their event. So it's, it's just a team effort. Yeah, just like parts. you said though, you need a good crew to win a championship, to win a battle. It's not about just good driver. You need a good car, you need uh, good hospitality, you need good everything good, yeah. uh, when you're out, Team is everything. On the, on the, out on the road, especially in the US, you're traveling far. I mean, yes, Japan, we're talking about um, 
be hoke earlier about being 12 hours away from here, but that's 12 hours versus like uh, driving cross, cross country. country yeah. yeah, in Australia too, it's like super huge, right? So um, definitely, I'm kind of glad I live here because everything is a little bit more. <laughs> I mean, the traffic, you know, traffic is not good, but and there we go. There is a lineup that is a R33 coupe versus the JZX100 right here. Here we go. This is going to be another exciting battle. JZX Hunter Mark II versus the R33 Coupe right here. RB versus 2J. I think it's a 1J. I think uh, I think this one is 2J. It might be 1J, but I'm pretty sure it was 2J. I think it's one, I think it's 1J. It's a J. It's a J. J so here he comes right here. Water in the lead while we have Ichizuka in the chase right here coming into outer zone one. Oh, and the inside click one right here. Oh, it looks like oh. yo, Ishizuka right there kind of got tripped up on inside click one. And Wada just trying to finish off strong right here with inside click two. And it like we looks said, like Wada's pace is kind of not there. He doesn't look like he's getting on it as uh, well as he should be. But at the same time, we just saw um, Ishizuka pretty much straightened behind and most likely that might be an incomplete but here we go Wada tries to um, get wide out on the line outside zone one kind of leaves that area early then behind you see Shizuka straightening around the inside clip area so now we have to flip these two drivers around and see how they do in front and behind each other Yeah, Ishizuka definitely got tripped up on that inside clip one. Yeah, but that's a really important part, even for the FDJ drivers. I mean, you have to make sure that you keep your rev up and make sure that the tire keeps going, because if not, the car, with the grip level you have right now with these cars, I mean, the car is going to want to straighten as much, or just like that, in a, in a snap. So uh, we've seen that at Qualify yesterday, too. With, within a couple of the drivers and we see that at FDJ as well so yeah that's definitely. the hardest part because uh that's I don't think we have many many tracks that comes from that um how can I say it the the, the car transition. doesn't yeah, yeah, yeah. Or going from you know outside zone one to inside clip one there's a big speed difference there so there's a big decel right there uh, which we saw earlier with uh, Kaneda and Ida getting into uh, each other. And the angle that they're throwing into inside clip one, it's its that transitional point right there. And then you got to try to drag that out to the outside zone two. That's a lot. That yeah, they, you need a lot of momentum to drive through there. But at the same time, you can't, but that you line can't get that lazy talk, on your car. That and that line you talked about. You throw that wrong line, you're going to be in different areas of that inside clip. But here they come back. The tables have turned. Right here, and Wada looks like he's getting left behind a little, but trying to gain some ground here inside clip one while Ishizuka is doing his thing, rolling into outer zone two and three. Man, it looks like Wada had a huge hiccup right there in outer zone two to outer zone three, transitioning over. Let's see the replay on that. All right, here you go. Looks like. Wada just can't get out of the hole as quickly, but here Izuka washes out on the inside clip. Tries to fill outside zone two, uh, does a well job there. Uh, Wada is not so close. Uh, he's probably about three, two, three, three car lengths away. Well, let's see what the other judges have in mind as well. So here we go. There they go, going left. And Robbie going left, all going left. So we're going left with Tomoki Wada here pushing on to grade eight. Yeah, so I would say it's not a clean run from both drivers. Um, looks like Wada, does, it, he's having a, I don't know if he's battling something in the car. It sounds like maybe the clutch is starting to slip or something, but he looks like he's not, you know, getting everything he needs. But he barely uh, gets by by taking out Ishizuka. 
Uh, Ishizuka did a, a fairly well job when he was leading, but it wasn't good enough to overturn what happened to him at the end of clip one when he was chasing. So uh, tough luck by Ishizuka, but hopefully he's back uh, for the next round or the round after that for the FDJ2. Yes, yes, yes. So here we are coming back to the line. It was our original start off right here with um, Yoshitatsu uh, Kaneda right here and uh, Yoji Ida. And if you remember, Ida actually uh, bumped a little bit of Kaneda's rear right there in this outer zone one to inside clip two. Yeah, and just as I was saying one. earlier, that's a very important area going from outside zone one to in clip one because you have to make sure that you have the car, the momentum. You don't want to kill it too much to the point where you're coming to a halt. Yeah, yeah. Where it's super obvious where uh, you're slowing down too much that the chase car hits you because you're just slowing down too much. And that's the, part, that's the hard part about judging that, you know? So here they come through the chicane, coming into 3 2 1. The Ida in the lead right here. The Canada right here. Canada coming into outer zone two. Try to get some proximity close right here in the inside clip two right here. And finishing off strong. All right, so now Ida knows he would have to just lay down the best uh, lead run he can. Right here, doesn't go all the way out, but fills outside zone one, misses inside clip one. And because he missed it, he comes into a weird line right here through outside zone two to three, but does um, make sure that the car gets close to the outside. But as he's doing all that, looks like Kaneda is starting to creep up to him after the in clip one. Um, looks like Kaneda was uh, keeping a fairly safe safe distance yeah. but actually staying within uh attack of Ida's car so I don't know if this is going to be good enough to turn around the uh, little love tap that Ida did to Kaneda's rear of that Cusco Racing 8-6 well we'll see here soon definitely Kaneda wanted to run a safe run here we go to the left right there so Yoshitatsu Kaneda gets the win. Yoshitatsu in the Cusco Racing 8.6 gets the win and is moving on to the Great 8. He will be going against car number 728, Tomoki Wada. So, you know, I know it was Ida's home track and all, but then this time he just couldn't um, do what he usually does, you know? That's very unfortunate, yeah. We, See, we saw him struggle a little bit during qualifying for sure, but... And, you know, but, you know, qualifying, driving by yourself in tandem, it's a little different, too. Yeah. So, I mean, um, if you're behind a car, you have to make sure that you don't touch the car in front of you, but stay as close as possible, which is going to be the hardest thing to do. And but next like at the line right now, but in the burnout box, you got uh, Ryuma Okada here. But at the line right there, you see number 34, Shou Saito. He's in that JZX90. Definitely one thing he said was, what was it? He said, drive hard and look better better than everyone else. That's his motto. That's what he tells himself every time he uh, gets on the track. So, yeah, let's see if Sho Saito can do that because he is uh, he's actually up at Ebisu a lot, and um, he practices here a lot. I don't know about just West Course, but he is at Ebisu, um, and he's been wanting to become an FD driver, and he's been working his way, and here he is. Um, competing in the FDJ2, which is going to be exciting to see how far he will go. And also, uh, Ryuma Okada, um, he also moved up. And he's I with think, uh, from the MSC League and stuff, yeah. Yeah, he's with K's Racing, so it's he's the K's is actually, uh, was it Kaitoku is the school that he's actually the owner of? Was what he was explaining to us. Yeah, he, he, he actually owns a, a study school after school school. I don't <laughs> know how to say that. School of a school, yeah. yeah. School of a school, like a kumon. Yeah. Um, here we go. Let's see here they come. Saito going. in the lead with Okada right here in the chase. But it looks like Okada's falling behind right there. I'm not sure what's going on, but Saito's pushing on through for a lead run. Coming to inside clip one. And Okada trying to gain some ground after losing him on that stretch. And Saito throwing a... Nice, clean lead run right there as Okada chases right behind him. Yeah, so off the start, it looks like Okada was struggling to keep up with Saito, but here we go here. There is a slight gap that was created by Saito, and Okada is falling behind, and Saito initiates, fills outside zone one fairly well, 
gets really close to the in clip one and he keeps going here when uh, Okada actually corrects and straightens. So most likely that's an incomplete for the chase car. And the lead car shows Saito just keeps doing his own thing and he drives around the track, finishes the track. Doesn't look like he made big mistakes. Yeah, Looks like a pretty fairly clean run by Saito, so. Most definitely, and he was at one point the the points lead for qualifying and you know he, he had high hopes but he was top on that bracket so he had a lot of people going right after him but we'll see here definitely he's been an aggressive driver all weekend he's been pushing himself but we'll see what he's going to do on the chase while he's chasing down Okada. yeah it's a different story when you're behind a car when you have a moving clipping zone you have to mimic the lead car all the time that's going to be really hard if the lead car um, kind of goes everywhere. So hopefully Okada is going to keep a really clean line on the outside line at the outside zones. Give Saito a chance to do a great tandem. So it looks like they're lined up, ready to go. And wait on that green light. There's actually red lights only though. But see, you got to mentally think green whenever it turns off because <laughs> it goes green. <laughs> <laughs> you see green. Just trying to give you a hard time, but yep. Here they go, right here. The Coming ready to go. Off, Coming man. through the chicane right now. Okada right here in the lead while we have Saito in the chase in his JZX90. Saito coming in, trying to get a little aggressive right here, but looks like uh, Okada right there missed outer zone one and inside clip one right there. Definitely took a different route. And Saito just trying to understand where he's got to be. Yeah, so it looks like Okada did, um, um, he came short on uh, the inside clip one area where he actually went inside the inside clip. So right here, he could not make it. He missed outside zone one, uh, went in a little bit too much. Actually, the inside clip became an outside zone for him. But it looks like Saito does uh, what he's supposed to behind him. He actually avoids that cone really well too. And stayed in drift. Yeah, so it looks like Okada make two big mistakes when he's leading and also chasing. So this is going to be really hard for Okada. He's in a really bad situation right now. Looks like, yeah, Sho Saito looks like he has the upper hand for that. Obviously, you all can see that from the replays. But let's get these uh, scores, or not scores, the judges take on it and uh, get to make this thing official. So here we are, Yochi Mamura is going to be pushing left to Saito. Andy Gray, Andrew Gray is going to be left to Saito. And then we got Robbie for Saito. So Saito will be moving on to the grade eight. Congratulations. Our next battle coming up is going to be number 12, Nagayasu, Nagayasu Miyagi here. And his 8-6 with Team Kazuma with Mahdi's. And he's going to be going against number 590, Hiroaki Kogura. Kogure right here in his JZX. And we don't see this too much of Cresta, right? This is a yeah, JZX yeah, Cresta. We, we see, see a lot of Mark IIs and Chasers, but not many Crestas. I think this is the one that's this is the first one in the FDJ or the FDJ2 competition versus this is Dr. Miyagi. He's actually a doctor. And an actually a really good dr driver too. Yeah. He's actually one of our, he's our doctors for the FDJ round. And here he comes right here in the lead, coming around in the outer zone one. And Kogure right here, just taking a really sharp line in the inside clip one, taking out the pylon while Miyagi's pushing around into inside clip two and finish oh, oh but definitely oh. ran into issue there but definitely but right before we went live he actually had issues with his front rack so i don't know if that's probably the part of where it affected him in inside yeah clip let me one. go ahead and watch the replay because it looked it started to look a little uh sloppy for both of the drivers towards the end of it well right here the cresta um, Kogude actually dives in small line, but it doesn't look like he corrects till he is drifting. But man, uh, the leading car Miyagi, it looked like a, 
you know, you got to finish like he was the having, end. Yeah, he was uh, having a all right run until the end. Uh, and you have to make sure that you drift through the finish line. You cannot straighten behind before that or spin through the line. So uh, something must have got him. It might be a mechanical issue, but it looks like um, that's rough. But like you were saying, like the whole mechanical issues, they did a whole full steering rack swap out. So hopefully that's not the cause of what happened into inside clip one, causing him to straighten out. But here we are, like we said, lead to lead, chase to chase, anything can happen here. Anything can happen here because we're going to have to incomplete the lead car, Miyagi, for that huge correction he just did at the last inner clip uh, before the finish line. So hopefully the car is okay. It looks like he is driving back to the start line. So this is uh, Kogura's chance to be the lead here and uh, make a flawless run. Well, Miyagi's going to be on the chase. Let's see. Looks like they're checking. Now he has his hazards on, so hopefully everything's good with his vehicle and he'll be able to run his chase run. You know what? It's not too sunny out. It's like overcast, but man, it's muggy. Let's see. Trying to get more word on it, but it's not looking too good for Miyagi here. All right, so bad news right now from the tech side of it. I think he is having issues with his car, so he is actually taking himself out of the competition. Well, that's very unfortunate for uh, Nagayasu Miyagi right there on his with his A6. Beautiful build, beautiful car, but very unfortunate that he couldn't get push on to make his uh, second run. He was doing some amazing qualify runs, practice runs all day yesterday and today. So very unfortunate to see him rolling off of the course broken. All right, never mind. That turned into a... Uh, looks like it's going to turn into a competition timeout. So let me go ahead and find out more information on what's going on. There you go, how tables can turn real quick. So hopefully they'll get his car figured out. His team can get together and get him back on the course for his chase. But definitely that uh, inside clip two was a huge mistake on his part. That's going to affect his lead to lead chase to chase comparison. But it's going to put a lot of pressure on Kogude on his uh, lead run. So while they're figuring everything out, I don't think the other cars yet have started getting their tires warmed up. But if you look right there on the right side, if you weren't here with us last week, we kind of talked about it. It's what happened here on uh, February 13th of this year, the huge earthquake they had out here in the landslide. There's his crew pushing back in. But uh, that, that landslide actually pushed about 30,000 tons of debris from where, uh, what is that? School course, yeah, school course coming down. School course, there you go. I'm sorry, I had the mic off, but yeah, as we see, it looks like uh, Miyagi's car is going back into the pits because they are comp uh, calling the competition timeout. Driftland. Driftland, I'm <laughs> yeah, sorry. There you go. All the guys out there that have been here a million times are like, these guys are getting it wrong. But yeah, Man, it's Driftland. I grew up here. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, so as they're getting their stuff situated, we will go to a short break. We'll be right back. ウェット。横浜。
Made in Japan. Breed. What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。オグラレーシングプラッチ。ORC。The brightness, called brilliant. Valenti. Ne ne, ame no hi no unten te, chopiri shinpa de me. Iza to yu toki ni chan to tomare de taya. Weto e. Weto e. Weto grip se no e no taya nara. Ame de mo shikari tomare te. 高い安全性を発揮滑りやすい濡れた路面でもより安心なやる横浜What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングプラッチ。ORC。The brightness, called brilliant. Valenti. And we're back here at Ebisu Circuit for the Yokohama Presents Formula Drift Japan FDJ2 Round One Season Opener for the 2021 season. Um, got with the, the crew a little and tried to adjust the volume a little. So hopefully it helps out out there. I did see all's comments. I let the crew know. So hopefully uh, the volume adjustment is going to help out with whenever the cars fly by or if we get too excited like the first round or the first run and start yelling in the mic. Yeah, I can't help myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, we left off with we left off with Dr. Miyagi having to call a five-minute, 
he had to call a competition timeout to get his car checked up. But yes, I think it's, he's having power steering issues. And now he's back on the line. Uh, Kogure uh, was chasing and now he's going to be leading uh, Miyagi. Now he just has to do what he has to do because he's actually sitting, or I'm sorry, uh, Miyagi is sitting on a huge disadvantage because of the uh, car issue he had at the last turn right yeah. before the finish line. And you'll see at the last turn, they actually had to do a quick cleanup of his power steering that fell out or uh, that drained out on the course. So hopefully everything's fixed up and he can run a good chase run and maybe hope Kagura <laughs> maybe makes a mistake. But Kagura has been doing some solid runs all day long. And yeah, Kogure. 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 <laughs> Kogure. Here he goes. Kogure in the lead while well, we got Miyagi right here. But Miyagi falling a little behind right there. And uh, having issues still. You can clearly tell he's having issues right there. And Kogure right there just finishing off strong in his lead run. Coming to the finish right here. But very unfortunate to see uh, Miyagi go down like that. He's been doing a killer time in his sweet build of a car. Yeah, beautiful car, a lot of power. Uh, but it looks like they couldn't get the issues out from the car, whatever it was. And here you go, Kogure in his Cresta. I like his angle coming out of outside zone too. Boom, look at that angle. Nice switch back. And he does his own thing, leading. And uh, Miyagi is nowhere to be found behind him. So this might be an easy one for us as judges, but not easy for them. Uh, for the team, they're going to have to be leaving early on the battle. First battle of top 16. You have a lot of ex experience in that, though. Your car breaking down on you. So that's yeah, I do because um, man, it's traveling all the way to the states, competing, and then yeah, and you know what's sad when sad. you start getting used to it, <laughs> and you're just numb to it. Yeah, you're just kind of like, oh, there it goes again, and. I'm here to hang out. Yeah, so very expensive uh, uh, sightseeing for me. But, but coming up to are. the line right here, number 11. But they are waiting um, for what the judges have input. And yeah, you can already see the other two lining up. So ready to go. waiting on this official call but yeah they're already showing the other guys lined up let's see if they'll get this official call for uh, who's pushing on to the grade eight for that last battle here you go yochi mimura going right andrew going right and robbie going right for Kogure. so car number 590 kogure gets the win over miyagi Tough break for Miyagi. Hopefully he is back and strong for the next round. But uh, Kogure will be facing Saito uh, for the grade eight. But already at the line, we have number 11, Mao Yamanaka in his uh, S15, really clean red S15. He'll be going against number 350, Kazumasa Suzuki right here. Yeah, so car number 11, Mao Yamanaka, if you hear the name Yamanaka, might be very familiar, but he is Kenji Yamanaka's son. Kenji yes. Yamanaka is an ex-Formula Drift USA driver. Uh, he used to compete in FD a while back, so I was able to drive with him a couple of times as well. Very ex experienced driver, so he has that Yamanaka DNA in him, and his son, Mao Yamanaka, is also driving. And you, in with that killer DNA, it's obvious he hit a number. He hit the number two slot for qualifying. Did some killer runs. Yeah, that was a very beautiful run. And right here is a uh, Suzuki. Suzuki's car. I heard that he is having a head gasket issue, so he didn't run any practice this morning to save his car. So this might be the first time he turns a wheel on the car today. But, so let's see how he's gonna do. So here he goes, Suzuki in the chase while we have Yamanaka in the lead. Yamanaka coming into three, two, one. Suzuki falling a little bit behind right here. Suzuki trying to catch some ground here in the outer zone one. While Yamanaka right here just flowing around and making his beautiful lead run right here. A little bit out on outer zone two, but 
you can hear how Suzuki's just struggling to keep up with him. And, and if you look at Suzuki's car, it looks a little familiar to our, uh, one of our FD, FD Japan, uh, Japan cars. Yeah, I guess his spotter is uh, Komatsu, which drives the IS350. Look at right here, uh, Yamanaka does a great job filling outside zone one, gets close enough for inside clip one. And right there, it looks like Suzuki has to straighten out because he is running out of juice. Uh, something is, uh, he's having issues with his motor, so it doesn't look like uh, the car is running well. He is struggling around the track. Now we would have to see how Yamanaka is going to handle Suzuki when he is behind him. You're right, you're right. And you know, Suzuki's trying to push his cars to his limits, and you can hear it, and he's, he's trying to keep that nice flow of drift, but that proximity definitely is going to play a factor. But is yeah, Yamanaka going to be able to like adjust himself to be where he needs to be on the, his chase run? Yeah, so he might be playing it safe, but um, you don't want to get an inactive chase, which is another way to be in a disadvantage. If you're if you're way too far from the leading car as a chase car, uh, the judges could also call call it as an uh, inactive chase. So you don't want to be too far. But also, uh, I think Yamanaka has in mind that Suzuki's car is probably hurt, so he's not going to have. He's probably not going to go full on right on his door. But let's see what kind of tactics uh, Yamanaka has versus Suzuki. Suzuki's going to be on the lead while Yamanaka's going to be on the chase. Yamanaka, very experienced driver, has drifting in his blood. So see how he's going to approach this on his chase run. It looks like they're getting the, the go ahead here soon. And here they go. Suzuki going through the chicane right here. Oh, oh, looks like we got a red flag. Pylon touch. Oh, uh, looks like uh, Suzuki jumped the light. Got a little excited there. So, yeah. We don't see that too often. Well, I mean, it's this more is, pylons than anything. Yeah, but this is uh, FDJ too, so just uh, the experience level of the drivers. You know, they're probably not used to, you know, running the signal light um, and going through the chicane. So there's a lot of things that goes through your mind, especially with Suzuki. He has a car that's hurt. Um, I'm pretty sure that he's going to have to give it give it his all uh, for it to work out. So, uh, But you cannot do that more than three times because the third time you do it, basically that's an incomplete for the lead car. So here they are lined back up. I have a strong feeling that an S15 is going to win this round. But which one? Yes, the one with the SR20 in it. <laughs> Looks like they're both good to go, ready to go. And here they are about to start off here. In their second battle with Suzuki in the front and Yamanaka in the chase right here. And it looks like another... There is another, he jumps the light again. So uh, this is the second one. If he does it one more time, if he does a, hits the pylon or jumps the light one more time. Maybe he's expecting a green light. Maybe he's listening to our live stream. And no, he's, he's jumping the light, so <laughs> it's uh, not green yet. It's still Maybe he's red. seeing green. So let's see if we can get a battle going on. Here against uh, Yamanaka and Suzuki. Like we were saying, Yamanaka, he's nothing new. You, his dad, Kenji Yamanaka, he was actually a formula, former FDUS competitor. But Yamanaka's in his team good ride with And you got Suzuki here with his Cosmo Auto Kit, real clean car. Yuta Kumatsu is actually a spotter, just like a few of the other drivers. So he had an FDJ driver actually uh, be in the eyes and ears for him on the on the track. Yeah, but uh, I guess uh, they're trying to figure out why that's happening. But I guess he is leaving a little bit too early. Hopefully, his spotter tells him. Um, to, you know, don't wait too long, but leave after the light turns off.
Alright, looks like they're getting to getting the go ahead to get this light started and hopefully we'll get a battle here. A clean start hopefully. And like we were just saying, if you're just tuning in, Suzuki's on the lead. Yeah, Manaka right here on the chase. This is their second battle. We'll get the cross comparison between lead to lead, chase to ace. Here they come into three, two, one. Suzuki definitely struggling in that 3-2-1 initiation right there and uh, straightening up. Ooh. Definitely not the lead run you want to see right there with uh, all those corrections and mistakes made. But, I mean, like we were saying, his, his car is definitely fighting something right now. So you see right here, very, very slow start by Suzuki and doesn't initiate till later. Right here, Yamanaka couldn't initiate, but uh, we will see that as um, it was caused by the lead car because the way the lead car was, and right there, there's a huge correction right after outside zone three for the lead car, Suzuki. And it looks like Suzuki incompletes both his lead and chase uh, runs. So this might be it for them for this weekend. Let us go ahead and make that official. See, that's the struggle right there, being on that chase and then having a, a lead like that, you know, making, because you're anticipating the best run possible, but if you anticipate too much and they too many corrections get made, that's where, you know, things can go wrong. Exactly, so no matter how fast you're going or how slow you're going, it has to be a chaseable lead run. If mm -hmm. it's not a chaseable lead run, um, you're gonna get docked for that. Here so. we go, Yoichi going left. Andrew going left and Robbie going left for Yamanaka. So Mao Yamanaka is going to be pushing on to the great eight. So better luck for Suzuki. Hopefully he gets his car situated for the next round if he is going to make it to uh, the next round because it's so far apart. Uh, we don't, we're probably not going to have the same drivers at all the rounds, but we're going to have different drivers from different prefectures and different areas. Um, going to different uh, rounds of FDJ2. So hopefully he makes it to the next one, but if he does, hopefully the motor is good. Yamanaka is moving on to the grade eight. So he's the first one on the right side bracket of grade eight. Let's see who he's gonna go against for the grade eight. Is it gonna be car number 75, Koji Nagase, or car number 570, Yuichi Miyasaka? Looks like uh, Koji Nagase is up at the line, rolling up right now. There he is, he's getting a uh piloted in while uh, number 57 Yuchi Miyasaka comes in right behind him. The biggest thing is is just seeing the different blend of cars, you know. Sometimes it does get old seeing the, you know, the common ones, but you know, like this one, we see a sore coming out here. So that's awesome. That's right, sores. Someone's real familiar with that. I don't know who, but I love sores. Those are really <laughs> good. I mean, I mean, to what do be you honest, like? I mean, it's an it's an underrated car. I mean, a 2J, a Jay-Z motor drops right in. It's got some buff axles and diff. All you need is a, you know, a strong tranny. And uh, they have uh, several different kinds of angle kits, you know. So I think it's a great car. But uh, let's see how Miyasaka's going to handle his sore. Going against Nagase. I think Nagase's been in a Jay-ZX for a while, so. He has, and he's with Team Kazuma while you have uh, Miyasaka in his uh, artist, TM Labo, Madi's Zek Nova. He's actually with the, uh, what's that channel that they have? Superstar Channel. Superstar Channel. So go check them out on YouTube. Definitely out here recording and getting some footage. So here they come right here. Miyasaka trying to catch some ground coming out. Of the Whoa, taking out the pylon and coming into Inside Clip 1. But that probably definitely made an error for him. But Nagasaka right here coming through into Inside Clip 1, finishing strong on his lead run. All right, so it looks like uh, Miyasaka went a little too out on outside zone one. Let's go ahead and check that out on replay again. Uh, Nagase flying by. He uh, makes a nice, nice flick initiate or uh, nice initiation, smooth, where Miyasaka actually goes off uh, two tires, hits one of the cones, runs over the cones, and that kind of abrupts the. Uh, the, the, the drift in the motion of the car. Meanwhile, Nagase looks like he is just doing his own thing in the front. So Mia Saka is sitting on a disadvantage here because of his incomplete. He spun right before the inside clip. So let's see how he is going to do. He's gonna just have to do the best lead run as 
he can as possible. Yeah, that was very unfortunate, hitting that first pylon, but the pylon usually flies away, but the, the base of it actually contacted his front tires, which obviously you can see how it kind of threw some of the traction off and made him lose it, lose it right there coming in inside clip one. No, he ran it over with his right rear tire. I'm gonna have to see a replay on that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but what's crazy is Miyasaka actually built this car for his son. Yeah, and then his son drifted it and he stopped drifting. And he's like, well, I already have a car that's built. Why does he use it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which that's awesome to see, you know. That's a cool dad, because we've been seeing a lot of, you know. Father-son uh, duos. Father-son yeah. or mother and son or family drift. Uh, Trying to keep it strong. Yeah. yeah, so it's pretty cool. So we'll be seeing a lot of second gen drifters uh, joining us hopefully within the next couple of years so so here we are Nagase in the in the chase while we're gonna have Miyasaka in the run in the lead run right here so we'll see how Miyazaka Miyasaka is gonna roll into outer zone one and see if he'll hit that nice nice run that Nagase needs on the chase here they come coming in the three two one to outer zone one not too bad in the outer zone, coming to the inside clip, but man, man Nagase right there, oh! Trying to stay right there on his door and catch those ground right here between two and three. The car kind of washing it out in the inside clip too, but man, Nagase right there, he was very aggressive on him from the start and tried to keep that all the way through. It looks like Miyasaka was losing motion at the in clips a lot and Nagase was getting really really close but he held his drift so he didn't correct got really really close right there Miyasaka not so much angle around inside clip and right down here two outside zone three very shallow but uh, Nagase looks like he kept a good distance from the lead car and did not stop drifting so this might be we're gonna have to go ahead and make it official here Get the judges' selections in. Here they are rolling up to get the scores. And here we are. So Yoichi Imamura is going to go left with Nagase, Andrew with Nagase, and Robbie with Koji Nagase. And Nagase is going to be pushing onto the grade eight. Congratulations. So let's see if that soar will be back for the second round, but that is it for Miyasaka. He did all he can, but Nagase gets the win and he is gonna be moving on to the grade eight. He will be battling Maui Yamanaka who just won uh, and beat Suzuki uh, at the earlier battle. So that's gonna be our third battle of the grade eight. Now let's see what who's gonna be in the last battle of the grade eight within these four drivers. And at the line already, we have number 310. Atsushi Hirayama right here in his S15. And right here we're waiting for Ryo Okabe in his JZX100. So Hirayama right here with his real fast racing. And he's also another one of the competitors that has a FDJ driver, which is Jin Horino as his spotter. So. I love this team duo that they have. He's out there helping him and then vice versa for FDJ events. He's out there uh, doing the same. It brings that whole Formula Drift Japan, you know, dynamic together. So Okabe is in the, is that Andrew Gray's car? No. <laughs> it's it a Modi's color uh, JZX so, um a very beautiful looking car. He will be going against Hirayama. Hirayama is going to lead. Okabe is going to give chase. So here they are right here. Hirayama in the lead coming up with a, ooh, but we got a red flag. And Okabe and the team Kazuma with Mahdi's, you can obviously tell. It says clearly right there, um, JZX100. But Hirayama has been doing some killer runs all day long. It was great to see the drivers come out today during practice run and they went straight into tandems. Like, they were like, you know what, let's not get our cars warmed up. Let's just go straight into tandem mode and get the, get the mentality down of 
going lead to lead, chase to chase. So here they are busting a UE and coming around back up to the start line. All right, so um, yeah, I mean, I guess this is FDJ too. So yeah, we were expecting some of these cars to start to get used to the light, start to get used to the chicane. Uh, so it's a little different from other competitions they've been to, but let's see if the start is clean enough. Uh, hopefully Hirayama doesn't make the same mistake again. So here he is, Hirayama right here in the lead. Okabe on the chase right now. Hirayama right there in the outer zone one. Nice lead into outer zone one. Trying to clean it back up, but right there is Okabe right there on his back. Trying to catch some of that ground right here in the inside clip two. And man, beautiful run beat by the two for lead to lead, chase to chase. So that was an awkward um, way for Okabe to attack at uh, mm -hmm. outside zone one, two, and clip one. But let's go ahead and check this out on the replay. Smooth, smooth, smooth initiation from Hirayama. Then Okabe gets really close right here. So he kind of beelines it in there. He darts in. Uh, both of the cars doesn't look like they're doing a good job on outside zone two as line, but they both feel outside zone three. And uh, after the outside zone two, it looks like uh, Okabe is mimicking Hirayama very well. But Hirayama's uh, outside, or his lead run was actually uh, very clean. He looked like he was bringing the car where he's supposed to bring it. Um, he filled the outside zone one very well. So now Okabe is going to have to yeah, that was a nice do a clean, killer lead run. Yeah, That was a nice clean finish there. But, I mean, that right there was what we wanted to see with Tandem. They were right there, almost door-to-door -door pretty much. Yeah. I he, know some of the zones were missed, but, I mean, I know these fans are looking for, they want to see a door-to-door -door crazy battle, crazy action going on. But, like you said, tables are turning now. So, yeah, so, yeah that would have been... That was almost like a completely nice tandem, but uh, yeah, like I said, Okabe um, darting it in from outside zone one to inside clip one as a chase car. So we'll see what his approach is this time. As yeah, let's he's see what he's lead, gonna do so when he's leading. Okabe gonna be on the lead while we have Hirayama on the chase. Hirayama definitely has a cool, different color to his S15, you know, grayish with all the wood green and everything. So let's see what they're going to do right here. Looks like they got through the chicane fine with the 3-2-1. Okabe right here in the lead, coming into auto zone one. Hirayama right there trying to close some of that proximity, taking a little bit wide on uh, uh, outer inside clip one. But right there, Hirayama transitioning into inside clip one and finishing off real strong right there by Hirayama. So that looked like a slightly later initiation by Hirayama right here. Okabe is leading, and Okabe actually, uh, nice flick there, does a fairly well job on outside zone. One feels, uh, gets close to inside clip one. It looks like Hirayama gets washed out. Um, Okabe feels outside zone two and three. Yeah, that washout right there, that's definitely gonna affect him. Yeah, Hirayama did, uh, he couldn't fill inside clip one because uh, he washed out. He had to lose angle and uh, try to run, a, try to get his car out to outside zone two and try to mimic what Okabe was doing. Uh, but it looked like he was struggling afterwards. Um, so we'll have to see what the judges has to say. Here they are pulling back around. So let's see what the judges have to say right here. So Yoichi Mamura is a one more time. Andrew Gray wanting a one more time. And Robbie Nishida going for a one more time. Looks like we're going to have a one more time by these two individuals right here. Yeah, so that might be an easy one to say because it looks like Okabe's lead run was more um, complete um, because he ran the line um, and he made it all the way out to outside zone two. He didn't do as a good job as Hirema did outside zone one, in my opinion. But it looks like uh, when they're both behind, it was very sloppy. And the chase runs weren't really so good on both the cars. But it looks like Okabe was bringing proximity to the table, too. So uh, everything looked like it evens out. We're going to have to go ahead and uh, check them out, see if they can match that out together 
uh, after that one more time. Most definitely, good call on that. Definitely was good lead lead chase to chase comparison, and I'm good. I'm ready to see them again. But here we are. This would be our last battle, but we will have another one more time by them. But already coming up to the line is number six, uh, K Murai. Murakami and uh, number 52, Konosuke Fujimoto right here. JZX versus S15 coming into the outer zone one. Ooh, Chase coming in real hot. Almost losing right there, coming inside clip one, but right there, Fujimoto trying to stay right there on his door. Murakami right there, finishing strong right outer zone two or inside clip two right there well that was another uh pair of cars that could have been caught in the disaster of per a huge correction after the inside clip one but looks like everything went fairly well right here a little bit of a gap in between the cars um murakami doesn't feel outside zone one as much as he's supposed to and right here there's a little wobble there uh outside zone two by murakami and it looked like um uh, Fujimoto was struggling to keep his car sideways going from inside clip one to outside zone two. So not the cleanest run by both drivers, um, but good enough to see another battle after they swap places. And we will be comparing their lead to lead and chase to chase. So you got Murakami in the JZX100. He's with uh, Village Up, which is a construction company. And then you have uh, Fujimoto, he's more of like a privateer. He's with D-Dash Racing. Yeah, he's, just, he's just doing it to have a good time. That's what he said. He's like, if it's yeah. not fun, I'm kind of done with it. Yeah, and he takes, it looks like he takes it seriously because, I mean, that car build, I mean, it's an SR with an S, or it's an S15 with an SR in it, but then uh, I think it had like um, tub or the cycle fenders on the front, the engine bay, and everything was really clean. It was yeah. built really, really clean, so... What was um, the... What happened, Kenny? I lost my train of thought. Oh, no. It wasn't SR, it was the... No, it's SR, yeah, VE head, yeah, v -E -head. Uh, SR. Beautiful build, so it's though. Still yeah, he an definitely, SR. yeah, he definitely had a beautiful, like, engine setup and everything. But he's been running this thing strong yeah, versus, all weekend. Versus uh, uh, Murakami's car, too. That's a pretty clean build, too. Um, I and think that's, like, the same. It says TMS, so I think it's a Takashi. Same or, concept of the livery and everything. Yeah, with Takahashi from FDJ, who drives that uh, E92 Euro, Eurofighter. It looks like... Um, He's still, he has that same aggressive dr driving style as his teammate, too. So yeah, it looks like they're taping up the bumper on the Mark II of Murakami's car. Looks like they're done with that. Taking one last check over on the vehicles, and looks like they're ready to give them a go. So they're getting thumbs up for a green light to go. So Fujimoto's going to be on the lead while we have Murakami in the chase. Run in the 3 2 1 coming in to outer zone right here. One nice initiation coming in. Ooh, and right there, Murakami just couldn't hold that through inside clip one. And Fujimoto right there finishing strong in his lead run. that replay and see what happened here from outer zone one to inside clip one four so we have to just make sure that the uh, fujimoto did a clean lead run right here nice flick initiation fairly well on outside zone one and he looks like he loses a lot of momentum there from inside clip one to outside zone two looks like there's a huge stall there but he keeps drifting and goes murakami does not get affected by that it looks like he gets affected by his own uh, where I don't know if he's not in gear or popped out of gear or something happened to the car after the initiation going to inside clip one. So, it's very uh, unfortunate huge, huge right there, correction. Yeah. yeah, huge correction by uh, Murakami, who was sixth uh, in qualify yeah. yesterday. So, and like I said before, it was, has been doing a phenomenal job out here at Bisu, but like, it just takes one mistake, big or small, it takes a mistake, and that pretty much can end it. 
So we'll have to see here, see what the judges officially say and what they call. And then after this, we'll be going back to our one more time. And that'll pretty much give us, wrap us up to get us to the grade eight. So let's see what the judges have to say. Got the cars back. And the silence is creating some suspense. Oh, here they go right here. So Yoichi Mamura is going to go with Fujimoto. Andrew Gray with Fujimoto. And Robbie Nishida is going to be going over to Fujimoto. So Konosuke Fujimoto is going to be pushing on to the great eight. Congratulations. So that was it for Murakami. Nice hustle by Murakami, but he gets knocked out by Fujimoto right here at top 16. So hopefully he's back. Ready to better go. And better than ever and stronger than ever uh, when he gets back. But Fujimoto will be moving on to the grade eight. Let's see who's going to fill the last spot of the grade eight. Is it going to be... Hirayama or Okabe from the one more time. We're going back to the one more time. Uh, or that's where we left off at before this battle that we just had. Two strong cars backed by two strong teams. So we'll see who's going to be pulling out to get to the grade eight. And man, in two weeks, in two weeks, we'll be having another. Uh, hopefully they can all make it to uh I just brain farted. <laughs> Bihoku. We're going to Bihoku in two weeks. So not this next weekend, but the weekend after that we'll be live streaming there too. And I believe it's gonna be from the top 16 again. So uh, you'll be seeing some tandem battles between if, the drivers. So it might... if, if you notice, we're only doing English commentating for FDJ, so, FDJ2, so. Yeah, there's probably gonna be a lot of different drivers out there. Here. Here they are for their one more time battle. Hirayama the lead. right here in the chase. Okabe coming in, trying to come in with a... Going to inside clip one right there. Right there on chase is right on his tail. Trying to keep that proximity close. And close in on him right here in the inside clip two. Both finishing off strong right there. Woo! A fairly clean run by both drivers. Clean start. And there is Hirayama initiating. Fields outside zone one. Okabe kind of creeps in on a smaller line in that area, but gets right back to where he's supposed to and tries to mimic the lead car's uh, line as much as possible and does a fairly good job keeping up and trying to stay within proximity. proximity. That was a good right, run right there, but we'll have to see right here when they change positions. And here comes uh, Okabe is gonna be in the lead while we have Hirayama on the chase. is going to be chasing Okabe down. Let's see who is going to make it into the last spot of the grade eight. Man, and thank you all out there for tuning in to us. I see everybody kind of representing, saying where they're from, so we do appreciate it. I know it's crazy times all around the world. Here we are, lined up, ready to go for our last battle for our, from our top 16 to our great eight. Let's see who's going to win this one more time by Hirayama versus Okabe. Okabe in the lead. Is, yeah, and Hirayama is going to give chase. So here they go. Looks like they're ready to go. Coming through the chicane right here. Coming into the 3-2 run. Okabe in the lead right here in the JPX 100. Okabe trying to get there. Coming around it. Outer zone two. And oh. That is not good right there. Looks like he shut down. Yeah, it looks like. Looks like here Emma's car shut down. I was uh watching Okabe where where 
Okabe looked like he was having a tough time getting out to outside zone two, and the car looked like it was, there was like a bobble there, but at the same time, Hirayama's car shut down, and it looks like, here we go, right here, and Okabe had that bobble, and I was thinking maybe that was part of the issue, but I don't think so. It looks like Hirayama's car just shut down. So, looks like they had a crew out there confirming his issues and it's not looking good. They're looking at their car right now. Now we have the FDJ uh, crew, FDJ2 crew coming out to tow the car. Man, for one more time to go down like this, this isn't looking good. We'll have to see here. Just another replay, see if we can see anything. And boom, something happened. Not yeah, so it looks like, um, yeah, there was no effect caused by Okabe. Okabe just doing his own thing. He led and um, finished his run. And then Hirayama right there getting towed away. Very unfortunate. They were looking underneath. It might have been uh, something with the drivetrain. Drivetrain or something. So here you go. Yeah, it sounds like it's a drivetrain issue because Yochi Mamura rolling over to Okabe, Andrew and Robbie with Okabe. So Rio Okabe is going to be moving on to the grade eight. Yeah, it sounds like a drivetrain issue because his engine is he's idling and they're towing him away. So most likely it could be Chani or Diff or something, but unfortunate for Hirayama, but Okabe is moving on to the grade eight. Hopefully so. he'll get it fixed in two weeks so we can see him at Bihoku. But till then, we're gonna be moving on to grade eight. Before we get there, check out some of these commercials. ウェットエ。ウェットグリップ性能A Guys, it's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. と革新。オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。オグラレーシングプラッチ。オールシー。モティ。The brightness, called brilliant.
Valenti. と革新。オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。オグラレーシングプラン。ORC。Welcome back, everybody, to the Yokohama Presents Formula Drift Japan FDJ2 2021 season opener here at Ebisu Circuit for round one. We just got done with top 16. Now we're moving on to our grade eight. So the first battle, the grade eight, we have car number 771 qualifying first. Yoshitatsu Kaneda going against car number 728 qualifying at eighth. Tomoki Wada. So this is going to be a Toyota versus Toyota, 86 versus JZX battle. Looks like we are seeing some. Um, some clouds kind of coming over here just and don't uh, say the r word and we're good. oh yeah the clouds are coming here and the breeze is getting kind of cooler so i'm getting a little worried so let's just get this started let's get this party started and get these drivers going so we can roll into our final four here here they go looks like they're getting the green light to go coming in right here with uh Kaneda on the lead with and there is the, the cone uh Kaneda hits the cone So uh, Kaneda has to uh, restart. We'll see. It's the it's the battle of the uh, spotters. I'll say. Well, I don't think Wada is the spotter. I said oh, it's battle the battle of the, of the spotters. Of the spotters. So yes. what are the bot what are the spotters going to do? Well, no, we're going to see who set up who better because you know you got Yusuke Kusaba on one end, but then you got Shinji Mino on the other end. Or better at the Manoa family, I should say. Yeah. And actually, I believe that 86 is Kusaba's old FD Japan car, too. So, oh, now so it's, it's a, ready to party. So now it's a Cusco Racing uh, Toyota 86. And Kaneda is Kusaba's spotter at FDJ versus Wada. This is his first time in FD, any kind of FD competition as well. And on in at his corner, you have the Minoa family spotting him. 
spotting for him, and uh, now they're ready to go. Looks like here they go, coming through the chicane. Looks like they're good to go, coming into the 3-2-1 right here with Water in the chase, and Canada on the lead run right here. Canada coming into in inside clip one right there. Darting hard into there, but oh, what a washing route right there in the inside clip one to the outer zone two. Man, Canada just throwing down right there, but Wada just couldn't keep it together coming from outer, or inside clip one to outer zone two. Yeah, so that was an obvious one where Wada actually did a half spin around in clip one, but right here, Canada is flying. Nice initiation. He goes out a little too wide, actually, before the outside zone one, but makes his way back into the in clip. Canada darts in for the end clip, but makes a huge mistake after he passes the clip. And Canada just moves on and does his thing, finishes his run. Now, Wada will have to do everything he can to do a clean, clean, close to a 100 point run, lead run. And Canada is going to have to stay within proximity, fair proximity. Yeah, and looks mimic, like. Um, Wada. He said it looks like. Oh, I mean, even though he kind of like dipped a tire out at outer zone two, he still collected himself and got pretty good line from inside clip one and all the way through finishing through. Yeah, um, well, I see it as he went too wide from out the beginning of outside zone one where that ended him up having to slow down a lot and he couldn't get back on gas up until he made it into inside clip one. He looked like he had to kind of wait for the car to settle uh, to safely get back to accelerate and um, smoke his tires, so. So here we are. So we're gonna have Wada in the lead while we have Nato on the chase right here. So looks like they're good to go. Coming in at three, two, one. Wada here in the lead right here. They did it come into the outer zone. Nice sweep through outer zone one, taking out that pylon and just like this one, another one right there. Wada just putting it all on the line right here. And Kaneda tried to collect himself at inside clip one and keep it all together. Yeah, so I am not sure if um, something's up with Wada's car, but it looks like maybe a, the clutch or something, but it looks like he tries to get on it, but the car's not going and it doesn't want to spin the tires and it only happens occasionally. But it uh, looks like uh, Kaneda gives him a good distance right there. Uh, Wada looks like he pretty much straightens out and burns tires going straight uh, during the transition. But at the same time, Kaneda was within uh, good proximity of Wada. So let's see what the other judges has to say as well. Here they come right here. So Yoichi Mamura is gonna go with Kaneda. Andrew with Kaneda and Robbie with Kaneda. So Kaneda will be moving on to the final four. The Cusco Racing 8-6 moves on to the final four. Wada's journey ends here, but his first FDJ2 round, he makes it to grade eight. So congrats, two weeks ready to fire back up. So here you go at the, at the line right now is gonna be number 34, Sho Saito, ready to go in his JZX90. He'll be going against number 590, Hiroaki Kogure in his JZX100 Cresta. So one of these guys will be battling the number one qualifier from yesterday, Kaneda, for the final four. So who is it gonna be, Saito or Kogure? Both big bodies right here, four doors. Saito's been very aggressive. We'll see what he's gonna do on his lead run and see if he can throw that closest. Oop. So it looks like he jumped the light. So um, they just need to line back up, take a deep breath. Get ready to go. So 
So we'll see right here. So we got the JZX90 and the JZX100 lined up, ready to go. Saito in the lead and Kogura in the chase. All right, so hopefully we'll get a clean start this time and it's a go. Here we go, Saito in the lead right here, coming through three, two, one. Nice in the outer zone one right there. And Kuguda trying, oh, Kuguda really made a huge mistake right there, coming through outer zone two to outer zone three. Saito taking out his bumper right there, and Kuguda completely lost it with that transition from two to three. Got real sloppy there. So right now we supposed to have the replay, but uh, yeah, there you go. What I can remember is Kogure actually takes the inside line and that's four tires out, so he already incompletes right there. Uh, meanwhile, Saito is in front doing his thing. Uh, Kogure actually does a transition from outside zone two to three and spins out. But before the spin out, Kogure pretty much already incompletes by running the really, really small line, uh, cuts in inside of the inside clip, and that's four tires off of the track. So Kogure incompletes, and Saito had a fairly well lead run. So now they're going to swap places to see how Saito is going to chase down Kogure. Checking out Saito's car, make sure it's good to go for this next run, taping whatever else came off. I know his bumper flew off from outer zone three and I think one of his taillights flung out. But hands down to the crew out here, getting these pylons ready to go, make sure the track's ready to go and uh, taking care of everything on course. Yeah, for the FDJ and FDJ2 um, tracks that we go to, the tracks always has either our guys or the track staff always has everything down. Um, so we have a smooth uh, event to to showcase. So hands down to these guys. That's that behind the scenes. Well, kind of behind the scenes, but that's stuff that nobody really, you know, focuses on. But, you know, you got to give it to them because they're out here making sure everything's safe and ready to go. Yeah, because that'll be a pain if, if the driver hits the cone, has to go back and put <laughs> Swing it... Swing back around. Yeah, do, do it himself, you know. <laughs> so... But here we are, Saito's gonna be on the chase while we have Kogure on the lead. See if Kogure can clean it up, get a nice lead run. But Saito's been very aggressive, so we'll see if he, uh, he isn't too aggressive here. But he did say he has to drive hard and look better than everyone else, so. We'll see what he's going to show out right here to get to uh, the final four. Looks like they're getting ready right here to go. Waiting on the light. Here we go right here. Kogude right here on the lead. And looks like we got another flag. Looks like it was a pylon touch there, coming to the chicane. It's a little more than we're used to, but I think it's just that, that hungry mentality that they have. They just want to get it, get ready to go. That anticipation. Yeah, um, hopefully this gives them enough time to you know, calm down and um, safely drive to the chicane. It's the same for everybody. So, I mean, you just got to take a deep breath and start at the right time and don't hit any of the cones. Looks like they're getting ready to get the, the go. Here they are, ready, wait, ready, waiting for the light right here. Once again, Kogure in the lead and Saito on the chase for their second run against each other. 
Here they come right here. It looks like we got another pylon touch right there. Maybe Robbie, Robbie spoke too soon about, you know, being calm and collective. But that's two right there, so one more could be uh, incomplete. So we'll see here, lining back up once again. Getting ready to go. JZX90 versus JZX100. Saito versus Kogure. All right, so Kogure has to make it through without jumping the light or hitting any of the cones, or he's going to be getting a incomplete for his lead run. You just got to take a deep breath. Leave when the light is turned off. All right, here they go. Got some engine revving right here. Let's see if they'll get through this chicane and get to the 3 2 1. And here they go right here. Kagude in the lead, Saito in the chase in the 3 2 1. Nice in the outer zone one. Saito trying to close that proximity from him. Coming in the inside, click one to outer zone two. Transitioning to outer zone three. Nice tandem Beautiful battle job, right there between yeah. the two. Very nice. Beautiful job by uh, Saito keeping a good distance from the lead car. And Kogure obviously was actually. Um, he was given a nice line. For yeah, the, that was a good lead. lead run by Kogure as well. But it's very unfortunate for Kogure's, yeah, Kogure's uh, big mistake that he made uh, when he was chasing. So look at that right there. If uh, he could have had a better run or if he didn't make the mistake. Don't know how it would have ended up today, but um, turning that around would be very, very hard. So they're heading back up there so we can get the final word from these judges. Let's see what they're gonna say. for Yorchi Mamura is going to be going left with Saito, Andrew Gray with Saito, and Robbie Nishida going Saito. So Sho Saito is going to be pushing on to the finals or, or for the next round for the final four. But yeah, if you're just joining in, yeah, we have our, uh, our guest judge, which is Andrew Gray, which most of y'all are familiar with his name, you know, four-time champ. I wish we could give him a mic so he can kind of chime in but no, he's excited to be here. He's excited to see the new blood that's trying to come up into the FDJ series. Yeah, because these guys that moves on, they are within the top 10 in ranking this, uh, the end of the year for the series. They'll be getting the FDJ license, so they'll be going against guys like uh, Andrew Gray. So let's see who is going to be filling the last two spots of the final four. So up at the line right now is number 11, Mao Yamanaka right here in his beautiful red S15. And rolling up to the line right now is gonna be number 75, Koji Nagase. We were saying before, Yamanaka is a very familiar name in the US Drift Series. His dad was actually there, Kenji Yamanaka. His dad still is, though, Kenji Yamanaka. He is. He said it was. <laughs> well, I'm saying he was there, as in he was a com competitor in the U.S. Uh, yeah, FD. Kenny used to be my friend. I was my friend. <laughs> no. But this is going to be an interesting battle. Both uh, very experienced drivers. Who's going to take them? Both aggressive. Here they go right here. Yamanaka coming in the outer zone one. Oh, oh it looks like Nagase right there had a late initiation coming in the outer zone one. And trying to close his proximity a little bit into inside click two right here. And man, that initial start from the three, two, one into outer zone one is definitely going to affect Nagase right there. Yeah, it looks like Nagase uh, straightened. 
uh, initiation. Let's go ahead and check this out. Yamanaka does a good job, then boom, there's a huge correction by Nagase, so that's like a double initiation for him. So most likely, um, I will have to discuss that with the other judges as well, but that almost looks like an incomplete. But even if it wasn't an incomplete, that is a huge, huge disadvantage made by Nagase, straightening after the initiation. So he had like a double initiation. Meanwhile, Yamanaka looks like he does a great job leading as the number two qualifier from yesterday's qualifies. His lead runs look pretty bulletproof the way it is right now. So let's see how he is going to give chase to Nagase and see if Nagase could give his all and do a great lead run. So Koji Nagase is going to be on the lead with uh, Mao Yamanaka in the chase. Yamanaka here at the line, ready to go. With his uh, Team Good Ride S15. Oh, we have Koji Nagas Nagase coming up, creeping up to the line right now in his Team Kazuma JZX100. Both lined up, ready to go. Here they go. Waiting All right, so let's see a clean start. Good proximity. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go, Nagase in the lead. Yamanaka in the chase right here, coming through to the 3-2-1. Nagase initiating it out of zone one. Yamanaka right there, right on his back. Trying to close his proximity into inside clip two right here. Nagase. Wow, very nice flow by the two drivers. Uh, looks like Yamanaka was uh, staying within proximity for attack. And Nagase does a great job here by initiating. Small gap created by both drivers. Nagase doesn't do a great job at outside zone one. Kind of washes out at inside clip one and just powers through the outside zone two and three. Meanwhile, Yamanaka is pretty much right behind him by the time they get through the finish line. Great job by both drivers, exciting driving. This is what I'm talking about. And that was the start for our right side of our bracket. So after this, we'll have one more and we'll be in our final four. Here we go to the left. Left with Andrew and left with Robbie. So Yamanaka is going to be pushing on to the final four. So congratulations. And here we are already rolling into our next battle, which is number 10, Ryo Okabe in his beautiful blue S15. He is going to be going against car number 52, Konosuke Fujimoto in the JZX100 Mark II. So Fujimoto is gonna be in the lead. Yeah, Fujimoto is leading. He was uh, he qualified 11th. And Okabe, Okabe is was qualified 14th. So the the driver that qualifies higher is going to be leading. So here they go. Looks like they're ready to go. Waiting on the lights. <laughs> Fujimoto coming up right here. Coming through the chicane. Three, two, one. In the lead position, Okabe right here on the chase. Let's see if Okabe's gonna close that. Oh. Oh, Okabe definitely making a huge mistake right there from outer zone one to inside clip one right there, but Fujimoto not getting phased and doing his normal run as the lead. Yeah, so that looked like uh, the line crossed over there because uh, Fujimoto threw too much angle um, going to outside zone one. Let's go ahead and check this out. 
and right there, but he washes out a little bit, kind of makes his way back in, but he's like max angle through there. It looked like he washed out a little bit. He looked like he was about to lose it, though. Uh, he keeps the car drifting. Uh, versus Okabe dives in a little too early, doesn't mimic any of uh, Fujimoto's line, cuts close. But well, we'll see what Fujimoto is going to do on his chase against Okabe. Yeah, Okabe looked like he didn't even make an attempt there to get to outer zone one right there. So we'll see, this is our last battle of our grade eight, moving to our final four. Fujimoto on the chase while we have Okabe on the lead. Okabe and the team Kazuma with Madi's JZX100 going against Fujimoto in his D-Dash Racing S15. Yeah, so that was uh, interesting to see because the lead car went way too out and came back in. Uh, washed out, came back in versus the chase car went in a little too early. So uh, glad there was no contact there, but they both made it through. Let's see what they can do. Yep, Kabe on the lead right here. See if Fujimoto can keep this proximity close right here, coming into outer zone one. Closing in on him right here in the inside clip one to outer zone two. And Okabe taking out both pylons in outer zone three. But looks like Okabe still kind of missed outer zone one right there. See this on the replay. Yeah, it looks like Okabe is having, and uh, the Okabe is struggling to stay on the outside, like right there, he misses outside zone one totally. Not super close on in clip one. Makes his way to the outside zone two. Fujimoto tries to stay as close as possible. That was our last battle for our Grade eight right there, moving on to our final four. Let's see what the results are gonna be. Is it gonna be Okabe or Fujimoto moving on? Looks like the sun decided to come out. So who is going to be filling the last spot of the final four? Is it going to be Okabe or Fujimoto? As you can see, the beautiful sky. Is it beautiful? <laughs> Some clouds in the in the air, but right in here the distance, we have yeah. Yeah. the sun is blazing down on us. It's getting pretty hot out here. So, so Yoichi Imamura is going to go left for Fujimoto. Andrew Gay Gray with uh, one more time, and Robbie is with Fujimoto. Fujimoto is going to be moving on. So Fujimoto gets the win. Um, I saw that I was going to go with the one more time as well, but it looks like Fujimoto was a little bit closer to doing his job as a lead car driver. Okabe cut in a little bit too early for the in clip. Um, Fujimoto washing out after the outside zone one uh, makes it very uncomfortable for the chase car to uh, give chase, but at the same time, um, the lead to lead chase to chase. Fujimoto looks like he was doing a good job. So uh, let us go on a short break and we'll be right back. いざという時にちゃんと止まれるタイヤ。ウェットエ。ウェットエ。ウェットブリップ性能エのタイヤなら雨でもしっかり止まれて高い安全性を発揮。滑りやすい濡れた路面でもより安心。やる。横浜。
Made in Japan. Breed. What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. Eo RSR Ichiban. オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングプラッチ ORC モーティー The brightness, call it brilliant. Valenti. Ne ne, ame no hi no unten te, chopiri shinpa de me. Iza to yu toki ni chan to tomare ru taya. Ueto e. Ueto e. Ueto grip se no e no taya nara. Ame de mo shikari tomare te. What's up guys, it's Freddy Gospo and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングプラッチ ORC モーティー The brightness, call it brilliant. Valenti. Hey, and just like that, we are back to Yokohama Presents Formula Drift Japan FDJ2 2021 Round 1 here at Ebisu Circuit West Course. It says semi-final because, yes, it is semi-final. We are down to the final four. On the left bracket, we have car number 771 qualifying first, Kaneda versus car number 34 qualifying fourth, Saito versus, oh, versus, and on the other side of the ladder we have qualifying number two Mao Yamanaka and qualifying 11th car number 52 Fujimoto so we'll see here with uh, Kanedo and Saito as our first 
First battle of the final four. Who is going to be moving up to the finals? Both have been very aggressive on their runs all day long, so we'll see what's gonna go down right here. And they in the lead with Saito in the chase. See how aggressive Saito's gonna come in right the door. Coming into outer zone one. Saito needs to close that proximity down right here. Coming in the outer, ooh, looks like he had a little hiccup coming in outer zone two, but man, look at Kaneda pushing all the way to the finish right here. Wow, great run by both drivers. Let's go ahead and check out that replay. Very clean, uh, good line uh, driven by Kaneda up front. He looks like he fills the outside zone one very well. Right there, and Saito is trying to hang on, but right here, he gets closer at in clip one, but he loses momentum, so he has to miss outside zone two and run a smaller line just to keep up with Kaneda's car. But he ends up um, getting behind him, fairly close, staying within proximity throughout the track. So good job by both drivers. Let's see what Saito is going to be doing when he's leading and see how well Kaneda is going to give him chase. Drivers coming back up, coming back around. And like you were just saying, Saito will be on the lead while Kaneda is going to be on the chase. Let's see if Saito can throw that nice, close to 100 point lead run so uh, Kaneda can get his chase in. Yeah, I mean, Saito qualified fourth at yesterday's qualify, so he should be uh, laying down some mean lead runs. See if he could shake Kaneda uh, with his fast Cusco Racing 8-6. Yeah, I know that uh, Saito's team had to do a huge fix on his car, a huge, uh, I guess, correction to it during yesterday's practice one because he wasn't getting the right feel that he wanted out of the or response out of the car. So, But after they did that, he's been doing killer jobs out here, but we'll see if he can throw down a good run for uh, Kaneda to follow or chase him. In. Yeah, Saito basically changed his whole front suspension system, uh, knuckles and everything, to something he was more familiar with instead of trying the one that was in the car. Here we go. Looks like he's got a pylon touch coming through the chicane. You can see right there in the background. It's not looking too uh, promising. Just as I thought the gremlins of hitting cones and are away from jumping us. the light is gone. It's back again. Hopefully they could take a breath, take a deep breath. Let's restart this. But, um, you know, to be honest, when I was competing and if the lead car did something like that and he had to stop because of the lead car, it gets kind of irritating as the lead uh, chase car, especially if you have like a good start or a yeah, good jump. Especially when you have a momentum going in your way, you kind of lose that. Yeah, because I mean, you're, you know, it's slightly nervous, um, you know, getting ready for the battle, then everything goes and it's like all of a sudden stop, let's do it again. So hopefully you can get this one done right. So here we go, Saito in the lead, Kaneda in the chase. It's their second run together right here. Tables are turning right here. Saito's gonna be leading us, coming in three, two, one. Out of zone one right here. Oh, watch a little wide outside over there, coming inside zone one to outer zone two. Kaneda trying to mimic him as much as he can. Oh, and some contact right there. Oh man, it looks like, um, I'm gonna have to check the replay, but it looks like um, Saito's car shut down right before in clip two as he was leaving outside uh, zone three. Let's go ahead and check that out one more time. Beautiful run by Saito. Very aggressive line, very aggressive run. Kaneda right there behind him, right next to him actually. Saito with the nice angle. A lot of throttle, then right there, looks like Saito just loses momentum. The car does not go anywhere, car straightens out. And it looks like, um, it looks like uh, Kaneda ended up on his left rear quarter panel. That's very unfortunate right there. It's like right at the end right there, everything just kind of locked up for him. But Saito's been doing an amazing job all week. But here you go, Yoichi Imamura going to Kaneda, Andrew going to Kaneda, and Robbie. So, 
Yoshi Tatsu Kaneda is going to be moving on to the final. Congratulations, the number one qualifier of yesterday's qualify is moving to the final. And the super aggressive driver, Sho Saito, gets knocked out right here, but he still has a chance to stay in to get the third spot at the podium. It really, really depends on this battle now because You're Mao right. Yamanaka is qualified second. If Mao Yamanaka wins, so Sho Saito will be third place. But if Fujimoto beats Yamanaka, since Fujimoto is qualified 11, Yamanaka is qualified second. He's a higher qualifier than Saito. Yamanaka will be getting third. So this is an important run for Sho Saito as well as Yamanaka and Fujimoto. Who is going to be taking this win? And they're already ready to go right here. Yamanaka and Fujimoto right here lined up ready to go. Just getting the word. Man, if Kaneda takes it, that's, that means he took qualifying first place and he's gonna take it all. But beautiful build, 8-6 right there. Yeah, the Cusco Racing 8-6. Well, right here we have an all SR, all S15 battle versus the two car Yamanaka in the red S15 versus Fujimoto in the blue S15. Here they go, ready for the lights. Three, two, one. Fujimoto on the chase. Fujimoto trying to mimic him all the way through the outer zone. One to inside quick one. Definitely had to oh, stop his approach coming out of outer inside quick one to outer zone two. Trying to collect himself to finish off from inside clip two right there. Yeah, it looks like Fujimoto became a victim of that area in clip one. Let's go ahead and check this out. Mao Yamanaka, nice initiation. Beautiful job at outside zone one. Fujimoto gets real close, but too close maybe, and he loses momentum. RPMs drop, car straightens out. Uh, he gets back into drift motion after that, but it's too late, it's almost an incomplete, most likely an incomplete by Fujimoto because of that huge correction uh, behind Yamanaka. But man, um, that was a very beautiful lead run by Yamanaka. It was, it would have been nice. It seemed like Fujimoto kind of got hesitant there coming in an inside clip. Not sure if uh, Yamanaka was gonna be able to slide or finish that all the way through because that was that danger zone from last week that we were struggling between inside clip one to outer zone two. So. Not sure if he had that in the back of my mind of like, oh, is there gonna be too much of a slowdown where I gotta kinda anticipate it now? Yeah, that's the place where you have to, I mean, I don't even know if you have to hit the rev limit or you have to keep your RPM going because uh, you have to be in the right gear and make sure that the car is able to keep the drift motion going from inside clip one to outside zone two. Just as you said, uh, we had a few people um, actually not making it through qualify and also losing at the um, tandems because of that area, the huge correction that they have there. Cause that's probably the very, uh, that's the most technical area maybe out of the track, uh, minus the, the wall coming out on the outside of outside zone one. So we'll hear, we'll see here what Fujimoto is gonna do in the lead position with Yamanaka on the chase. Ready to go, Fujimoto Kubush King into a 3 2 1. Yamanaka right on his back. A little correction by Yamanoto right there, or Fujimoto right there. Outer zone 2 to outer zone 3. Yamanaka right there, holding his line. So it looks like um, Fujimoto doesn't wash out like how he was earlier at the earlier battle. He does a good job on outside zone one and right there kind of straightens and gives him more angle, misses inside clip one and he is on a weird line going through outside zone two. Looks like Yamanaka doesn't have nowhere to go but he keeps his car drifting and they end up finishing the line or uh, going through the finish line together with a fairly good amount of proximity throughout the track. So we'll see what the judges have to say for this between Yamanaka and Fujimoto. 
and this is our last battle to get to the final competition. So Yoichi Mamura is going to go with Yamanaka. Andrew's going to go with Yamanaka. And Robbie is rolling over to Yamanaka. So Mao Yamanaka is going to be moving on to our final. So we got yesterday's number one and number two qualifiers going against each other here at the finals of Yokohama presents FDJ2 round one. Made it to the finals here. Almost done with the show. But before we'll be, we go anywhere, we'll be right back. ウェットエ。ウェットグリップ性能A の What's up guys, it's Freddy Gospel and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. と革新。オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。モーティー。The brightness. Call it brilliant. Valenti. Nee, nee. Ame no hi no unten te. Chopili shinpai de me. Iza to yu toki ni chan to tomare de taya. Wet e. Wet e. Wet grip sei no e no taya nara. Ame de mo shikari tomare te. 
伝統と革新オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングクラッチ ORC モーティー。The brightness called brilliant. Valenti. Nene, I'm in a few months and then, just be a little bit of a man. I'm in a few months and then, just be a little bit of a man. ウェットグリップ性能 A のタイヤなら雨でもしっかり止まれて高い安全性を発揮滑りやすい濡れた路面でもより安心ねやる横浜伝統と革新オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングクラッチ ORC モーティー The brightness called brilliant. Valenti. Ne ne, ame no hi no unten te, just be a little 心配だよね。いざという時にちゃんと止まれるタイヤ。Wet A. Wet A. Wet grip 性能 A のタイヤなら雨でもしっかり止まれて。高い安全性を発揮滑りやすい濡れた路面でもより安心ねやる横浜
伝統と革新オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングクラッチ ORC モーティー The brightness called brilliant. Valenti. Welcome back to the Yokohama Presents Formula Drift Japan FDJ 2 2021. Round one here at Ebisu Circuit West Course. All right, so it looks like our finals is about to start, but what's going on right now is it's, it's almost game time. But、uh, I see from here in the pits, it looks like the Cusco Racing 86 is doing something with the rear suspension. Looks like they're changing an arm or something. So Yamanaka is actually、um, heading to. The warm up. So, as soon as that car, Yamanaka's car, gets to the、uh, start line, and if、um, the Cusco、uh, Racing Canada's 86 doesn't make it to the start line, they will have to call a competition timeout. So, yeah, here we are back. Here we're on a final run right here. The final two that made it from top 16 all the way where we're at now. Hopefully, they'll get that Cusco 86 ready to go. Here he is, about to get his tires warmed up. Hopefully, these clouds are going to hold off for this, but in the distance, you can see some clouds building up around us. Give us a little bit more time to get a few battles done. But we'll have to see here. You got Yamanaka right now getting his tires warmed up. We'll have to see here. But in two weeks, you'll see us again for the FDJ2 round two at b i h y o k u So, yeah, this is new. This is the first year of this series, and this series is pretty much exactly like the Prospec in the States setup. Um, these guys are trying to move along and try to build themselves up to get to the FDJ level for next year. But let's see what's going to go down for this final battle of the day. But it looks like the Cusco Racing 86 is still in the air and they're still working on it as Yamanaka just pulled up to the start line. I think we just got the call that they just started his five minute competition timeout for the Cusco 86 for Canada. Canada? So let's see. <laughs> yeah, I think,、um, I think Kenny's getting tired. <laughs> But、I、the sun has been kind of beating down on us, and yes, it's a little don't muggy. Don't say us. <laughs> It's been me. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Beating down on you. But then it's been muggy and hot up here on, on the at the judging stand. But yes, the competition timeout just started for the Cusco Racing A6. Kaneda is patiently going to be waiting for him、um, to get his car back down so they can battle Yamanaka for the finals. But yeah, Yoshitatsu Kaneda has been doing an amazing job all day long in that car. Ripping from practice qualifying all the way here to from the top 16, and now here is in the final. He took our first qualify with 93. There you go, that's Kenji Yamanaka, ex FD、uh, USA driver. He is actually watching what is going on at the pits,、uh, seeing if Cusco is going to get the car、uh, back on the ground, ready to go to go and battle 
his son, Mao Yamanaka. So interesting and uh, so amazing to see, you know, what your father used to do and now your son is taking on uh, your hobby and making it, uh, you know, the next becoming a competitor, yeah. yeah, and competing. So let's see. This is definitely not the way we want it to end. No, we don't. So I am just, uh, I got my fingers crossed for the team to get everything done. But uh, the hustle. And at one point, you know, he, he suffered some contact early in his battles from top 16 all the way to where he's yeah, at Yeah, then I think that's what's affecting him too. I believe he has about three more minutes to go. And there's a tech guys right there. Notifying them of the time. And that's the thing, they do, they've done a phenomenal job. They want to make this car, make sure this car is 100% because the way he's been driving has been pure for what they need for this final battle. But don't get it twisted. Yamanaka's ready to go too. Yeah, and that's the- Number uh, two qualifier too, yeah. Yeah, the number two qualifier. And that's the thing right here. I know everybody wants a clean battle and every one, everybody wants him to see, or everybody wants to see a good battle for the finals. But at the same time, your car has to be ready to go when it's game time. And you know, the clock is ticking right now. We can't give them extra uh, special treatment by giving more people extra time. We had this, uh, we had this uh, situation a while back at Okayama where uh, for the finals, Andrew Gray was going against uh, Koichi Yamashita. That's for the finals and they had a fuel leak and uh, they had to, you know, get the car repaired. They were taking all the time they, used, or using all the time they can to get the get the car repaired. Hey, hey, look, I see some movement right there. The car is uh, on the ground they now. Lowered it. Yeah, then. Uh, Looks like they got the car on the ground. It should be ready to go. Oh. And there you go, we just heard the car get fired up. And there he is right there. What a phenomenal job by his team right there to get that car back on the road and ready to go on the track. You see, hands down to that team right there. That's hard work, just getting, I know you guys were kind of like dragged out by that, that break, the commercial break, but they had to get a chance to get new tires put on and everything ready for this final battle. And then we turn around and rolled into their five minute competition timeout, so. There he is, you can see rolling out of the pits. It looks like he's ready to fire up and, and battle this out. So there was one minute left on the clock. So um, Cusco got it done. Great job to the guys. Round of applause to the hardworking men behind everything. Now Kaneda is off to scrub his tires. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, you can see scrubbing his tires, getting them ready, warmed up. All right, so I believe that was uh, about four or five minutes, close to five minutes for Yamanaka to stand at the line. So I think they're gonna ask him to see if he wants to scrub his tires as well to get heat back in it. Um, <laughs> Kaneda has uh, done his scrub, went, got his tires warmed up, and it looks like Yamanaka is ready to go. So thank you for the team working hard, and thank you for your patience, guys, out there. That was a really close one with one minute left on the clock. Kaneda is back with his Cusco Racing Toyota 86 at the start line versus Mao Yamanaka in his S15 see who is going to. So Kaneda is going to be on the lead while we have Yamanaka on the chase here. So let's see who's going to be the winner of the first FDJ round ever. FDJ 2 round. FDJ 2 round. Here we go. Kaneda right here in the lead coming in to the 3-2-1 with Yamanaka on the chase. Yamanaka got to close that proximity right there into him coming into inside clip one. 
Pineda right there going to from two to three. Nice transition into inside clip one right there. And Yamanaka right there just trying to close that proximity throughout that whole course. And there's a small gap created on the straightaway, but let's go ahead and check out the replay. It looks like, it looks like um, Kaneda went way too far out. He did, um, that was about two tires off on the outside of the outside zone one. He did miss completely. Or he didn't get close to inside clip one either. And I think uh, Yamanaka saw an opportunity there where he can dive in. Uh, he didn't run the outside line when he was behind at the outside zone one. Uh, but towards, or uh, a little after, uh, around after outside zone two, he was able to close the gap, get a little closer on proximity. Now let's see how well Kaneda is going to chase Yamanaka. So here they are pulling back up. Looks like Kaneda's bumper suffered a little bit of damage throughout that run. He'll be on the chase while we have Yamanaka on the lead run here. Crew's gonna go ahead and patch up that bumper damage for Kaneda while Yamanaka goes up to the line and gets ready to go for his lead run. So here they go, let's see. Looks like he's good to go. So Kaneda's coming up, ready to go for his chase. All right, now uh, we'll have to see Yamanaka lead and Kaneda give chase. Let's see who is going to do a better job on leading and chasing. Here we go. All crews out here checking them out, seeing who's going to win the first ever FDJ2 round one battle. in the red S15 with the team Good Ride. Kaneda in the Cusco coming in to the 3 2 1 to outer zone one. Pulling into inside clip one right there. Kaneda trying to close that proximity coming into outer zone three. Both finishing off strong right there from inside clip two. See this replay right here. All right, I just have to. <laughs> I was really, really concentrating this time because of the situation. Earlier, we had. Um, Earlier, we had Kaneda wash out on uh, the re lead. Miss inside clip one. Uh, it looked like Yamanaka's line wasn't so well uh, when he was chasing as well. But when Yamanaka was leading, it didn't look like he filled the outside zone as well as he should be. But at the same time, Kaneda was right behind him, very close uh, throughout from the beginning to the end. So let's see what the other judges have to say uh, on this one. Here they go, lining up, waiting for the judges' results. Yoichi Mamura with a one more time, Andrew with a one more time, and Robbie is gonna be going with a one more time. So it looks like we're gonna have a one more time for this final battle. Yep, so um, exactly what we were saying earlier, um, Kaneda's lead run, he was way too out. Um, Yamanaka's chase run wasn't good either. He was running a smaller line, but at the same time, it was harder to chase Kaneda's lead. Then Yamanaka leads, he does a proper lead run, gives Kaneda a chance to chase, but Kaneda was in better proximity than Yamanaka was throughout the whole track uh, when he was behind. So that kind of evens everything out. 
there were small uh, other mistakes that each driver had made, but overall it looked like that's uh, worth it one more time. So I think all judges uh, went with it one more time. Let's go ahead and see. They're going to go back and probably change tires real quick or check their cars out, make sure everything is good. And uh, this is going to buy the Costco Racing some time to check out their car too. But uh, Make sure all those tweaks were good. Yeah, but, yeah. but I think uh, they're supposed to go back and only do tire changes. We'll so, see what they're going to do. Yeah. So while they're doing all that, I am sorry to say this, but we're going to go on a short break again. We'll be right back, and let's find out who's going to take the win here at ABC Circuit. ウェット。横浜。Guys, it's Freddy Gospel, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. と革新。オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るための<笑> The brightness, call it brilliant. Valenty. <laughs> Guys, it's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban.
伝統と革新オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングクラッチ ORC The brightness. Call brilliant. Valenti. And we are back.、Uh, so, if you're just joining us, we're going through a actual one more time battle for our final battle of our top 16. Yes, it's the final battle.、Um, and it's actually a one more time because earlier,、uh, the first, or the, the battle we had earlier with、uh, Kaneda versus Yamanaka, it was too close to call. All three judges said one more time. And we are going to see. Who's going to win this after this one more time? Here at Yokohama presents Formula Drift Japan FDJ2 2021 first round finals. One more time, though. <laughs> We already have here one at NBC final, Circuit,、yep. and looks like the weather's just holding out for us. Oh, you said it. If anything happens, guys, this is. Kenny's fault. It's only going to come down when we start cleaning, so that's okay. That's fine. We just want to see a nice, solid run by these two individuals. All right, two solid cars, two solid drivers. Who's going to take home the carbon? Here we go. Kaneda right here in his lead run with Yamanaka right here in the chase, coming in right here in the outer zone one. Made it taking out both pylons. Rolling into outer zone two. Swinging back on outer zone three with his bumper barely hanging on and finishing off right here. And Yamanaka definitely、uh, struggled coming from inside clip one to outer zone two there. Let's see this replay. Yeah, it looks like、um, uh, maybe the 2J versus the SR is. The, or the SR side is struggling when he's coming from the inside clip. But right here, once again, a little bit too wide by Kaneda. Yamanaka does a better job when he's chasing on the line, but right here, he does have to run a smaller line than Kaneda just to make up on the proximity side of it. Gets right back in it, gets close to him by outside zone three. So I would say that was a very、um, clean chase by Yamanaka minus the outside zone two. Um, he couldn't make it out to the outside and mimic uh, Kaneda's uh, lead run. But at the same time, Kaneda's lead was okay because、uh, he was two tires off in the outside zone one and looked like he was washing out a little bit on,、um, after the outside zone one,、um, just like his earlier runs. So if he can make that a little tighter, that would be a lot better、um, for him. But let's see what happens when they switch sides. So Yamanaka, places, yeah, yeah. Yamanaka is going to be in the lead now, and Kaneda is going to be on the chase. But looks like they got to patch him up, up once again on both ends of his bumper. Took a thrashing on that、uh, outer zone one, taking out both those pylons. Yeah, so I don't know what the bumper budget is for Cusco Racing over here, but. But these, these are some solid runs by our number one and number two qualifiers. So these, are, these guys are definitely、uh, the ones that they're going to be gunning for for FDJ2. Rounds throughout the year. Exactly. And both of the drivers are probably carefully watching the other car to see the opportunity to scoop up this win because it's everybody's game right now. It could be either the drivers taking home、uh, the first place top spot. So. Looks like Kaneda's ready to go. Kaneda's going to be pulling up here shortly. But yeah, if you're just following in, this is、uh, FDJ2. So this is the new series. Starting this year, first time ever, they're going to have a few different tracks from FDJ,、um, but there are some similar tracks that they will be performing at and、uh, racing at. So we'll see how this year is going to go between these drivers. 
Yeah, so this is another series of Formula Drift Japan. It's FDJ2, like you said, and it is pretty much equivalent to the prospect that they have in the Formula Drift USA series. And now here is a final. So here we go on their second one right here. Coming up on the lead with Kaneda on the chase. Kaneda right here coming into outer zone two, closing his proximity to Yamanaka right here into outer zone two to outer zone three. Beautiful line coming in, mimicking everything he can to Yamanaka's. Wow, He's that was a great uh, lead run by Yamanaka. He actually dips his tires too. Definitely but there's a lot more proximity right here by Kaneda uh, behind Yamanaka. Yeah, definitely not making it easy for these judges to make their call. So this is actually the one more time battle that we already just had. So we'll see what the results will be for this final run of FDJ2 round one here at Ebisu Circuit West Course. And yes, this is the actual course that got damaged. You can see right there on the right. But if you didn't join us last week, we talked a little bit about how the course workers, the track workers and everything cleaned that all up. It was like 30,000 tons of material removed. Let's see another re replay right here for the judges. Yeah, they're not making it easy for us uh, to make the decision here. Let's see, go ahead and uh, check out the lead run. Right there, Kaneda does dip his tires pretty deep out, but makes it back into in clip one. Makes it all the way out to outside zone two. Uh, makes it out to outside zone three. And by then, uh, Yaman Yamanaka is right there behind him, but he does have to sacrifice his line at outside zone two. And right here, Yamanaka is leading. Kaneda's giving chase, and right there, Yamanaka also goes a little off, um, and Kaneda is in uh, slightly better proximity but very very close battle by both these cars some amazing talent we see here in FDJ2 and these two drivers right here are no joke our number one and number two qualifier tough call for these judges so let's see right now what the results will be for our round one of Formula Drift Japan 2, FDJ2. Waiting for these results to come in. Next event will be in two weeks at B Hyoku. We'll be there for FDJ2 for round two. All right, we'll be right back with the res results right after these commercials. ウェットエ。ウェットブリップ製のエのタイヤなら雨でもしっかり止まれて高い安全性を発揮。滑りやすい濡れた路面でもより安心なる。横浜。
What's up guys, it's Freddy Gospel and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. Eo RSR Ichiban. オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。オグラレーシングクラッチ。ORC The brightness, the call it brilliant. Valenti. ねえねえ、雨の日の運転ってちょっぴり心配だよね。いざという時にちゃんと止まれるタイヤ。ウェットエ。ウェットエ。ウェットグリップ性能エのタイヤなら雨でもしっかり止まれて。Made in Japan. Breed. What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospel, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. Eo RSR Ichiban. オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。オグラレーシングクラッチ。ORC。The brightness, the call it brilliant. Valenti. ウェットグリップ性能A Made in Japan. Breed. 
What's up guys? It's Freddy Gospo and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. ボグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチボグラレーシングフラッチ ORC モーティー The brightness, called brilliant. Valenti. ねえねえ、雨の日の運転ってちょっぴり心配だよね。いざという時にちゃんと止まれるタイヤ。ウェットエ。ウェットエ。ウェットグリップ性能エのタイヤなら雨でもしっかり止まれて。高い安全性を発揮滑りやすい濡れた路面でもより安心やる横浜ladies and gentlemen we're back here at the yokohama presents formula drift japan fdj2 2021 Round one here at Ebisu Circuit West Course with our final results of the day. Man, that was a close one because it started to sprinkle a little bit. All the driving is done and now we are here to present you the top three of the day. So coming in, third place today with Washiku Onsen with Jim C Speedmasters in the JZX90 Mark II is number 34, Sho Saito. Congratulations to this upcoming young driver making it onto the podium. Well done for the day. And now we would like to present Yokohama Presents Formula Drift Japan FD2 Round 1 here at Ebisu Circuit. All judges did not agree. It was one more time and two judges went for this driver. The winner of round one here at Ebisu Circuit is qualifying number one, car number 771, Cusco Racing, ZN6, Toyota 86, Yoshitatsu, Kaneda. Yoshitatsu Kaneda gets the win here at round one. But not falling too far, far, far behind him is going to be the Team Good Ride with Kendai S15, number 11, Mao Yamataka, Namanaka, right there. Woo! Congratulations to these three drivers. That was a tough battle, especially for this being the first, you know, FDJ2, you know, series ever ran, first time ever, and having these kind of drivers come out and then get this kind of crazy driving, amazing battles that they had all day long is awesome to get, see. All right, so let's go ahead and ask these drivers what they feel. Let's go into the interview um, for to, to the first uh, place winner. This is Yoshitatsu Kaneda. All right, congr congratulations to Yoshitatsu Kaneda. He said he is really, really happy uh, to qualify first yesterday and getting the first top spot here uh, today's round. He is just super happy and stoked. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
やってちょっと本当悔しいです。また次回リベンジしたいと思います。ありがとうございます。And Mao Yamanaka coming in second, he said、um, he was gunning to win this because he really, really wanted the top spot. He was second yesterday, so he really, really wanted to、uh, take this. It's too bad. Pretty sure he's going to be coming back, and、uh, he would like to thank everybody. Congratulations. Oh. Uh, uh, サイの超斉藤選手。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。最後、彼の選手、準決勝に向かって、ちょっとミッションが壊れてしまって、最後の面を目指します。すべてを出し切って出す。次にまた頑張ります。よろしくお願いします。ありがとうございました。All right, and he said thank you very much to everybody. And when he was going against Kaneda earlier, his transmission actually broke.、Um, so he had a vehicle issue where he couldn't make it all the way, but he said he did all he can. Hopefully, better luck for him next time. So there we are. We have our top three today, and they stand proud here at Ebisu Circuit. This is the Mecca of Drifting, a worldwide event, Formula Drift, and this is Formula Drift Japan. FDJ2, new series that we have, and this is a top three. But here in two weeks, they're going to be having round two. So, yes, enjoy this win, but make sure y'all are ready to buckle up for round two at Bihoku in two weeks from now. Yeah, so I know a lot of these、uh, drivers are going to be traveling, and I'm not sure if all the drivers are going to be doing. The full series, but I am interested to see how this championship is going to shape up to、uh, at the end of the year. And like we said, the top 10 drivers will be awarded、uh, FD Japan license. So they'll be going against the big dogs, just like Andrew Gray right here. Thank you very much for joining us here at the judges'、um, judges panel up here. <laughs> judges panel. I cut myself off, but yeah, once again, thank you very much. There you go. That's Mao Yamanaka. Yoshitatsu Kaneda, and next to him is、um, Sho Saito coming in third. Great finish for. Yeah, and I would like to thank everybody who、um, has joined us today on watching us on live stream and also all the competitors and the teams. And there's so much more. There's so much more going on、uh, behind the scenes, just、uh, we were talking about. And uh, once again, a、uh, huge thank you to Andrew Gray joining us for、uh, this round as the judge. Maybe we'll see him soon doing this again. Somewhere else joining us, right? I'm looking forward to that, especially in two weeks. So, hopefully, two weeks they'll be ready to go. I know a few people had mechanical issues. They got to get their cars ready to go, but we're looking for a good fight, good qualifying runs, and then hopefully good battles next round. This is interesting because we've never done this before. And、um, let's say it's like a sister、uh, brother event from FDJ, FDJ2. And、uh, this is Yokohama Presents. So, everybody's on Yokohama Advan 8008s. And it's probably much,、uh, pretty much of a fair game for everybody. Everybody's on the same grip level,、uh, same tires.、Uh, very interesting turnout. There's so many different、uh, cars we saw. There's Soars, Skylines, and now、uh, we got a winner right here with the 8.6 and with the 2J in it. Then we got second place here with S15 with the SR. So it's like a bunch of、uh, cars thrown into this series. Interesting drivers. And look at the guys. They're young drivers. We got a, you know, a former FD driver. And his son now joining a team and making a team.、Uh, they're fighting for the top spot here, too. And we have Cusco Racing, which is a world renowned、um, racing parts company. And we also have Sho Saito over here, a very young upcoming driver,、uh, fighting and getting into the top three. Exactly. And then you have a lot of FDJ guys coming out and helping support these guys to get them where they need to be to move on to the next bracket. So, congratulations to everybody, all teams out here, and everybody that came out, and all the people out there that are watching us. We really, really do appreciate it. Thank you. And don't forget to watch、uh, Formula Drift English Town next weekend.、Yep. And the following weekend is going to be back with us again. If you're not irritated hearing us again and seeing us on screen, please join us、uh, back here in Japan.
いざという時にちゃんと止まれるタイヤウエットエーウエットエーウエットグリップ性能 A のタイヤなら雨でもしっかり止まれて高い安全性を発揮滑りやすい濡れた路面でもより安心やる横浜